Education Work Session. Please stand and repeat the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today we will continue reviewing the FY19 budget. Mrs. Langliff, <laughs> Langliff, I'm sorry about that, Robin. That's okay. Would you like to continue? I've been called worse, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> um, basically, I'm going to kind of go back to where we were in the slide presentation. Um, actually go back a slide or two okay um, just because I have come up with some additional costs some of the things that we didn't have estimates on oh okay at, good last week we were able to get some estimates for so um, and you can't really tell but I put them in purple so that they would stand <laughs> out but you can't really see that on this slide no. I like oh I so, see one's purple I see so a couple oh yeah I see that yeah it's adjusting was yeah. one that we were looking at Langraf, could you tell us what, what slide that is on for the, even the public? Um, this is on slide 33, I believe. Have we got that for? Yes, we, oh, we probably we had a second. Um, second. Furniture and equipment was an area that we needed to look at just throughout the budget, custodial, um, instructional equipment, and administrative offices. So I put uh, $55,000 in there for that. Uh, retirement agency fee, I still don't have that number. I contacted them last week. They said by the end of the month we should have it. Today's the end of the month. I still haven't seen anything. So, okay. um, Non-public placements, this is $155,000. I've increased that budget, and that is based on the current students that we have in placement. Um, and most of them are middle school age students, so I don't see anybody who's going to be aging out of the program. Now, they may move or you know, come out of the program in other ways, but at this point I put in that entire amount. Um, we had already talked about the rest of these maintenance contracts, repairs to buildings, custodial supplies, and the hourly adjustment. Substitutes and the other thing, request for new positions. Um, only one that I have changed on here and I didn't apparently put it in purple on this one was the last group there the multimedia specialist yeah. the reorganization of the there. PIO office and I put hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in there because what we're looking to do is change the public information change the categorization of that position from what it currently is to a director position change the current communication specialist position it's currently budgeted in a clerical role move that to a specialist role and then add the multimedia specialist. so what is the who or what is the hundred and twenty five thousand dollars for is well, that for the PIO or it's it's the P it's the the re um, categorizing the okay. PIO position okay to a to a director, director. position, um, recategorizing the certification specialist position. It's currently budgeted as secretarial, making that a specialist position, and then adding the multimedia uh, specialist. So it's recategorizing two positions and adding one. Right. We currently have two. They're both going to be recategorized and one and added. But they're already in the budget. The specialist Only and the multimedia specialist but are yes. already and in the budget. So it's just the director that we're... But not at the level that they're going to with the reorg. Right. Their titles are being changed. Yeah, I understand Which means that. their salary probably is going to change. Oh, okay. And okay. their duties are going to change. I understand so all that. I under understand all that. I'm just the trying to... The 125 isn't all for the one position. No, no. That's for the entire reorganization. Okay. Of that Can we... job descriptions for you if you want to take these. Oh, okay. These. Mm -hmm. um, I personally would like to see that broke down. I was going to ask okay. the same thing. I can do that. Thanks, If Annette. you don't mind. Annette, thanks. I was going to, too. Okay. We need one for Carrie and one for Sharon. One for Carrie Sorry. and one for um, Beth. Beth when she gets here. Thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. 
Morning. Yeah, if, if you could break that down, I'd appreciate that. Now, Good morning. What Hi, page of this do I go on, or do I? That um, particular it's, it's 125. That's not, it, that's it's not in the administration salary. Oh, it's just inclusive. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's part of the okay. Leadership. But it is on our slides. It's, it's, it's under administration salary and wages. Mm -hmm. Right. On page seven. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks, Jen. Yes. Yeah. That's just my salary. Okay, here we go. Page seven, the, mm -hmm. the first number mm -hmm. in there, basically. Mm -hmm. It's included mm -hmm. as part of that. I, I want to keep tally of all the new positions that are kind of going to be discussed, not just that department, every thing. I need okay. some scratch paper. What's the back of the agenda? It's Good idea. Playing. I didn't get an agenda. Oh, or write it, on, write it on the back of your... Um, Back of the page. There you go. Yeah. That way you can keep your notes. I think she's already got it. I put mine in my um, budget thing. I think all the rest of this we had discussed last week. Mm -hmm. We did. <clears throat> now these are all new. These were these were ones that we did not have numbers for last week. So early oh, okay. college, academy, dual enrollment, um, we've looked at that and basically right now we're spending about $15,000 on dual enrollment. So with the early college academy, we're anticipating that that's going to that's gonna probably double. Why is virtual academy $291,000? Okay. There's two pieces to that. Um, 121,000 of that is the actual purchase from the company and Mr. Paluski you can jump in here anytime sure. and then the other piece is there will be two additional teachers so at um, $85,000 a piece that's $170,000 for the two additional teachers and then and, and you know, so the 121,000 is for the program itself it's for Correct. the program itself okay. yes okay. there's costs associated with the software and right. then there's materials okay. of instruction that go along with it there's PD that goes along with it so there's a lot of different components to that okay and that's spread through the instructional part of this budget I've got okay. different pieces listed so just Robin if I can just just one thing I think it's very important to understand about the virtual academy is this would be to be able to offer opportunities to possibly students in Queen Anne's County that are currently not enrolled with us. Right. So we have started out with 50 um, that we think is realistic, 25 at from K oh, to 8 20, and 25 at high school, and then to be able to grow. So yeah. they would be new students. Right. So there would be a per pupil allocation that we would be receiving as a result of 50 additional students. Do okay. we have a projection of how many students? That's what I was just getting ready to say. Do, how do we know that we'll have enough students to, to pay for this? Sure. Uh, currently, there are over 250 homeschool students across Queen Anne's County. Right. So we know right there that there is a, a student population out there um, that through a, such a virtual academy exists. So shooting at a 50 a number of 50 students we think is realistic. Uh, also, it could attract um, uh, students possibly going to a private school um, that we might be able to attract back to our district. Uh, we're also looking at, uh, although they are our students that are home in hospital, it does add another variety. Um, so, but the target is we know that there are over 250 students that are not enrolled with us. And, and also a cost for the student, say a homeschool student, to apply to in, so it's free for homeschool students. Right. And so what we've estimated is if we get 50 students out of the 250 that are out, about half of their per pupil would be about $4,000. So that's 4000 times 50. So that would be revenue of about 200000 My question is why would we hire two teachers not knowing that we're going to have the students to do it? We have to give you an estimate we have to of give you what an it estimate. would cost of what the program would be. So that's a... So the, the, the program requires two teachers? Is that what you're telling me? So there are two components, right, to this program. Okay. And one is the online component where it's all online, 
and those students that are new would draw revenue for us. Yes, it costs something to be a part of that, right. but they bring revenue back in for us. The other part of that program is for students who are home hospital teaching, right. who are our current students, and who need additional supports. And so that is uh, the piece that, that would require the additional teachers for students <coughs> that we currently have. Are we going to survey these 250 absolutely. students? A absolutely. So we put not all of them, all of them. So not only the, the homeschooled, but those on home hospital teaching that we currently right. have okay. to okay. see what would okay. best meet their needs. So we have a better idea because we're saying 50, it could be 100. Yeah. When, right. Um, when when would we two. do that? When would we do this survey? Because, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to... Is there some sort of contract that we would enter into, like a homeschooled parent that would lock them in, say, if you're signing up for this, you're signing up for, the, for this amount of time? No, no, not for a parent that's going to enroll in the program. The contract would be with the virtual academy, the, the vendor. So we'd have a contract with the event with the vendor that says you're you're probably you're going to get you know however many students 50 students 100 students right. and this is the cost per that we would get per student right. and the cost to them. My, so my guess my question is though what if I'm a homeschool parent and I want to let little Johnny try it and oh he doesn't like it so we're going to back out of it. Right. How does that work? just like it would any other just if a parent any parent yeah if a parent wanted to enroll their child and then take them <coughs> out we can't stop them from doing that my question is is how soon would we be doing this survey because i'm very skeptical of putting two hundred ninety one thousand dollars in the budget as soon as we get and go ahead to to go ahead and try it and see what you know put some feelers out and see well i i do believe before we even attempt to put that in the the budget that we need to we would need some type of guarantee we, yeah, that we're going to get enough that, that we have people that are interested and that's that's the right thing that, to do you know that, absolutely that's the right thing because to do. i think that that's going to be questioned you know um how about if we put 291 dollars in the budget and uh, let's hope not, but how about nobody signs up for it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now we've spent $291,000 and, and two teachers that, that we don't need for this program. So this, this we is the right, that's the right yeah. decision. Right. Right. So we couldn't do that before we had this conversation right. with you. Right. So that's the right thing to do. So we can yes. certainly get moving on that. I think that's a good idea. With the go idea. ahead. And, and see what the see what the uh, interest is. Right, exactly. I think that that's the main thing is to see who is interested in this before we commit ourselves on our on our budget for it. I, I'm just curious how this even came to be. Was it driven by public input, or did somebody like how? Why are we? Like what drove this conversation? Yeah. So it started, and Mr. P can jump in when he when he uh, feels it necessary. But it started out of a need for the students that we currently support. So we're looking at the students who are served by APA. We're looking at the students who are served by home hospital oh, teaching. Okay. Yeah, and we're looking at the, so the students behavioral that issues were, and the medical issues kind of drove this, and that, now the the door will be open for other people who may not have those issues. I see. Exactly. Okay. So the way we got to the place where we could extend to students who are not currently enrolled is the conversation about revenue and cost. Right. So for our own students, we know that we need to do something different to meet their needs because we have an increasing, as you well know, an increasing a number of students who are, requ who are requesting home hospital services, a increase increasing number of students who are really having difficulty um, staying on their program because we're not meeting their needs. We're one of the few districts that doesn't have twilight school or evening school or anything alternative to meet the needs of kids who aren't making it during the day. And then we thought, how are we going to pay for this? Mm -hmm. Well, we could expand our reach and we could draw revenue to cut down on the expense mm -hmm. of servicing students, that which we have the responsibility for, for servicing, and this was a way to get to that. But also, um, having some conversations with our our, age, our partners who have agencies and, you know, saying that parents, so there are some parents that are homeschooling their students who, if given an option for a program that's already put together, complete mm -hmm. with the computer, right down mm -hmm. to the art supplies or, or music or whatever materials of instruction that are necessary, would much rather do that mm -hmm. than what they are doing. Mm -hmm. So that started our reach and our mm -hmm. thought about, well, how could we pay for the increase in services that we need to provide to students that we have mm -hmm. and reach other students 
and it would help some families. Right. Just, no, I agree with you, too, and I like the idea that they can then feel a part of the Queen Anne's County. They can graduate. Is that right? They could walk on stage. They can feel the support that goes along with being an actual Queen Anne's County student. It would go however it is that we, you know, worked out with those families. I've done it in, a, in another district where that group, and it was about, uh, you know, it was over 1,000 students, 1,100 students. They had their own uh, separate uh, get-together, so it wasn't a graduation year for them, but they had sort of get-togethers for sporting events that they pulled yeah. together because it was a large group. That was about 1,100 students This or families. This is not. We're talking 50 maybe or 100. Yeah. So if we decided that we want to open the doors and say, come on in, graduate with an assigned high school or what have you, then we certainly could do uh, that. That's what I was going to ask, too. I was curious what other districts are doing and how that program's grown and you know, what kind of costs were associated with that? Because we talked about the low end, like what we hope we get 50 students, but we also have to think about like, what if we end up with like a thousand and are we prepared for that and yeah. what the needs are? And so I don't think we have, um, at least we don't have on record that there are a thousand families. We've got about 200, <laughs> right, right. right? Uh, in, in this small uh, county, right. but we've got about 200 that we know are out there, 200, 250 right. that are out there. And we certainly could do some things to, to make them feel, you know, a part of. Um, in, in, in another district, in Frederick County, actually, we're going to pay a visit to them um, toward the end of the month, I believe it is, March. and we're going to look to see how they do it, mm -hmm. um, because I believe they may be the only other district in the state of Maryland who has an actual virtual school. What, now, which county is that? The Frederick. Frederick County is the only other state in Maryland that has a virtual school? To my knowledge. So we're mm -hmm. pioneering on that, then. Yeah, it's, it's innovative. That's kind of exciting. It's, it's, it's innovative. Yeah. I have a question, though, about, like, how how long do you, feel, like, if we would say, just hypothetically, we get awarded enough money that we can start this program, how quickly is it to set up? Would it be in this budget, or were we look projecting it a year out? A, you know what I mean? I can tell you, I've done it in a matter of months. So I believe a couple of years ago when we started having conversations, by the time we started having conversations to the time we got it approved by our school board, there probably were, you know, two or three months that went by. I literally had the summer to get set up and get those families enrolled, and it was an onslaught uh, because at that point, for that academy, it was students from all over the state who could apply to that academy. So if we did allocate that money today, our dream would be to implement it in the next school year. We wouldn't do it in the middle of a school yeah. year or in the yeah. summer. So our goal would be the, the future budget. year, but we'd need our funding in place in order to process that. that okay. Correct. Okay. I we don't no want to go backward with the funding, forward with the funding does that, and the um, process. Does that affect their per pupil ratio? Yeah, because yeah. we'd have you to, get to count them. They consider, you get they to count, count them, them as their students. Okay. okay. So that would be wonderful for us. Right. So because it would be counted. Would be, so you know. actually, if we're like a lot of systems, we may have children right now who are taking sure. online high school. We do. We don't get counted for them. They're not a part of our right. system. This could draw them back into our system. We've presented them with the same kind of program. They're going out on their own and finding. We get to count them. They get to be a part of the system. They might be able to walk at graduation, whatever the case may be. It's, a, it's an inclusive thing to capture not just our home hospital and those students, those but are kids who have students. already mm -hmm. said, we're finding our own education. That is correct. Home school. It's a doorway for them to come back through yes. our system. That is correct. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I would like to see a survey well, as to how many might be My interested thing is, in is doing I, it. I just, mm -hmm. I don't want to be like the naysayer here, but I, I, do, I, I do feel like we need to have a official presentation brought to us about this before mm -hmm. we can allocate that much money. Yeah, I don't really it. know what, what I'm... Sure. You know. I'd like and, to see it exactly and, how it works. And, and let's start with... Um, a survey. Let's to, get the to, survey. So I think that the survey to, to you. Yeah, all the right. survey but is. But I'm not sure we're going to have enough time. Is what I'm saying. Right. For you to get this all together by the time we're going into the budget and asking for this money. To that, put this money on this year's point. budget. That's, that's I, what I'm, I'm with that's what I'm too. trying to make myself clear. Yeah. On. A plan, sure. But is this we the appropriate budget year right. to allocate? Right. Um, five or six weeks to do it. But keeping in mind that when you allocate, it's probably not going to implement till the next year. 
But I'm willing you, 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 you just I mean, I'm willing we'll, to give we'll it to go you. Go with see. it however yeah. it is that you wanna look at it. If you if you want us to move forward now, okay, we'll move forward let's, now. If you wanna say let's take this whole year as a study year, then we certainly can do that. So well, we it might is, not have a choice. I think yeah, right. we you might know, not. When it comes down right. to money, we might not. Right. 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 But I if think that that survey We're going to have to have support to show. Yeah, we have yeah. to have, yeah. we have to see the that we have is. students right. that yeah. would be interested in doing it. Right. That that will be my thing. Yeah, I'm totally not comfortable. And that we've done our research. Forward, and we have not really looked at right. it from exactly. multiple angles. Exactly. And I think we have that so that many is, other needs. That's the first thing that we need to do. And then we can move on from there with a presentation to see exactly mm -hmm. how it works. Mm -hmm. But I think that we need to see right. how many kids in the county, <coughs> how many families right. would be interested in doing this. Right. And I'd like to hear from the families, the too. Survey? Yes. I. A survey is good, yeah, um, and also just maybe hearing from the families. Maybe, you know, on the day that we just <coughs> well, we put the it on the agenda for play. a board meeting, invite families who are interested in speaking with the board about this. Um, I don't know. If those are options. Um, we'll see what the will. Well, we could put it right on the survey. Yeah, you know, their suggestions, what they would like to see in the right. program, um, would they like to have, would they like to be part of a presentation. Right. Um, but just right. some kind of idea how many families would be interested in doing it out of that. That's the right decision. Yeah, yeah. Before we jump in and put that in mm -hmm. there. Right. So, because I think we're going to get questioned for it. Absolutely. In a bunch of we don't have our basis. Yeah, our yeah our basis. I don't feel good yeah. about defending that when no, we haven't no, studied I think, it. No, no, I think we have, to, we have to move forward with that and, and see how that all works out. I mean, I'm all for it if it... Yeah. If we got the kids to do it. If we've got it. the background and the, 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 the history to show the need, yeah. And yeah. the other thing, we're not behind the trend. If Frederick right. County is the only one that's done it so far, right. then we're, right. you know, we're still pioneering. So. Yeah. 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 And sometimes it's good when, <laughs> to have information, kind of see what worked in other counties, what didn't, you know, so that we Instead can of being learn the from their that, mistakes. Yeah. So yeah. that's another challenge um, in terms of moving forward and advocating for something. I don't even have other comparisons. Right. So right. we are a bit of a guinea pigs, and I don't want to put that kind of money on us to be the no. guinea pigs if... No, because we'll be pulled, uh, to, pulled yeah. to the carpet for exactly. that. Exactly. Oh, so yeah. that's why I think it's necessary. Yeah, to, I agree. So... Get our homework done first. Yes. <clears throat> okay, the next item there is school day SAT, um, and this is being able to administer the SAT during the school day. And Mr. Brown had put a $30,000 item in his budget, but some of the other things in his budget had decreased. So, so instead, of the, overall <coughs> instead of the students having to go to Easton and Elkton on a Saturday morning to take this test, we will do it right in the high schools here. Is that's, that what that, that is? That is my correct. understanding. That we will be, it is we will be able to do day that. SAT, as if I we administer great. park assessments, right, it's right. school day SAT. Yeah. Now, like will idea. they pay for it like we do when, when we send them off to the other places oh. to do it? There's so, a charge. There is a charge. $240. <laughs> <Right. Well, that's, laughs> Annette knows all that. That's what the, the, the $24,000 or the $30,000 that Mr. Brown put in his budget was to cover that cost. Oh, so it would be so a free So it would be free to, to the students then. Okay. And oh. some students Oops. will qualify for waivers. Right. Oh, I like that. Is that because that's still our free and reduced lunch mm -hmm. children? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, I do like that very much. Okay. And then, of course, we discussed the band uniforms the other day. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then there were several other things that, as I worked through the budget book, that we needed to include as part of this budget um, that we had not discussed the other day, so I just wanted to make sure that I brought those to your attention. Um, the third party administrator for the 403B-457 plan, that's something that we're currently getting involved in. As I'm getting ready to retire, somebody needs to take over that. And there's a lot of laws and regulations that go along with those plans that we need to make sure that we're um, up to date on. So having somebody who does that for a living <laughs> is much okay. better than having it as being a piece of somebody's job. Okay. So that's a $10,000 item. Um, increase in PD system-wide, and there was a list from the instructional supervisors as to what kinds of PD that they need to administer for next year. A big part of it is the new science program. Um, so we have included an additional $90,000 for uh, PD for stipends for teachers. I'm sorry, but I don't, what is PD again? Professional oh, development. Okay. Would that be for like at the end of the school year like we've done in During previous the years? Time, curriculum writing, all of those kinds of activities that they do. So are we paying them to... Are we increasing the hourly rate? Is that what that 90000 is? 
Yes, actually, we were going from what they would like to do. Now, all of this is part of the negotiated right, agreement. Right. Is they would like to increase that hourly rate. Currently, we're only paying twenty one fifty an hour. Oh, okay. That's that. what that. And that's what the ninety thousand is. Yeah, okay. It's, to increase the hourly rate, <clears throat> and to be able to cover the cost of right the DV that right. we need to do. Okay. Okay. Um, mentors for teachers and principals. We're looking at increasing that $35,000. Um, it's probably been four or five years ago that now we have uh, three years in order for a teacher to become tenured, and we have continued to offer them uh, mentors throughout that, that three-year period um, if they need it. And it, depending on the number of teachers you have, if you have you know 75 new teachers in a year, then you obviously need more mentors. But at this point, when Mrs. Pauls did her estimate, it looked like we were going to need about thirty-five thousand more dollars in order to. How many continue. mentors do we have right now, currently? <clears throat> do you know? We have uh, twenty. Twenty. And they do multiple. Right. Um, employees. Okay. Okay. Then the big item there is license agreements. Three hundred eighty thousand dollars. And the truth of the matter is, this is something that for the last several years anyway, and I'm going to say five at least, as we've gotten into um, the one-to-one -one laptop initiative or device initiative with the students and whatnot, we've been buying these licenses out of what we, I'm going to call fourth quarter money. At the end of the year, we go ahead and buy the license for the future year because we can't get it into the budget. I'm not sure we're going to be in a position this year in order to do that. And good budgeting practices says we need to get this in the budget. Right. It's a true cost of doing business these days, so we really need to I do I have this. a question. Mm -hmm. If we went to leasing our student computers and our teacher computers, do we need the, that license? We still need the license even if we're, we're, having, we're leasing that out. Mm -hmm. Yes, because yeah. this is a license for the software for the curriculum that they're using. Oh, okay, okay, this is okay. The okay. textbook license. Okay, okay, okay. Um, these are the um, interventions. Interventions. Thank okay. You. Drawing a blank on the word there. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, that's that's what I was. Okay. And then the last thing there is um, the group. We, I just got the group insurance rates from Mabe just this week, as a matter of fact. And we're going to have to increase our insurance by twenty thousand dollars in order to make that work. Our insurance with Mabe. We, yes, all of our our liability casualty property right. insurance is all through the great the Mabe Group Insurance Pool. Right. And um, they just gave us our estimates as to what that was going to be for next year. Okay. Great. So then what are we doing to try to alleviate some of these costs? And these are some of the things that we're doing. Um, reviewing all the staffing at all the schools, looking at class sizes, especially in, in the AP classes and some of the CTE classes, we have some really small class sizes there. We, we need to evaluate whether we offer those programs. Um, teacher assignments, we've been looking, especially at the middle school level, where we have unified arts um, some of those teachers are being assigned doing other duties and maybe we need to you know reevaluate how they're being assigned make sure that they're having um, professional duties middle school pe classes we have two pe teachers at each of the middle schools and some of those schools are smaller than some of our elementary schools where we only have one pe teacher so those things we're looking at too um, Health care coverage, of course, this is something that's part of the negotiated agreement. But right now, we currently pay 100% for our EPO individuals. And while that's a great recruiting tool, I don't think that you'll find very many places out in the world where people mm -hmm. get health care for free. So we're, that's something that we're looking at. Is that um, a negotiated item, though, with the union? Yes, it is. Yeah. So that's, that. I mean, but that's something that you we're know, looking we're talking yeah. about. Um, Admission fees for students. We had gone away from this a couple years ago. We used to charge kids two dollars to come into a you know football game, basketball game, whatever. And we did away with it. They're getting in free now. 
we're looking at maybe reinstituting. I think that's a good idea. Maybe a dollar. I think yeah. that's a great idea. You know, um, I was surprised when when my son said that they go to the football games and it doesn't cost anything, mm -hmm. uh, because it's always cost to go to the football games. So I think that yeah, that's something we have to look back at. Right, and those gay receipts um, help offset. Right, you know, some especially of the costs when if in they make it to program. states and and those things exactly. where we get nothing. Right, and and yep. yet we're still footing the bill for electric and everything yep. else. So. Yeah, I think that that's something we definitely mm -hmm. need to look at. And then, pardon me. Oh, I'm sorry. I have it on my computer. <laughs> I was like, what I was am I supposed to be looking I'm at? Sorry. I was <laughs> just listening to you. I wasn't even yeah. looking. <laughs> I was reading off of my computer. That's all right. <laughs> sorry. About that. Okay. Um, and then pay to play, of course, that was something that we had instituted years ago, yeah. probably five years ago, six years ago. And then while. we took it, took it back out. But yeah. that was a $130,000 item. So that's just, you know, something else to just consider. I hate pay to play. Um, yeah, we won't, pay I, to play. I won't agree you to pay, pay to play. We to all know play that. a sport in high school. Oh, yeah. I don't know. That already got issues with that. I've got issues flag. with our students paying to get into a game too, but that's me. Yeah, but that's you know what they know. They they know that it's it's an offset. You know, kids. I, I you know most kids are surprised that they don't have to pay anything to get it. Other schools charge to get into basketball games and to football games. So, you know, I, I'm okay with that. I, I think it's okay actually good. Pay to pay. Pay to play. <laughs> yeah. Just, hey. Anytime <laughs> money's involved, there's a segment of our society that gets left out. This is true, but I like the idea of just a dollar to come to the game. Then you're yeah. also invested as a kid, and you're yeah. realizing, well, this costs me a dollar to get in. It's almost a little bit more of a respect factor. Right. Mm, and then they won't come. <laughs> right? They'll still but, come. You know, They'll still come. Yeah, yeah I think they They'll will. They'll still come. Yeah. So I do think that we need to, to evaluate that, yeah. Okay. Um, and then as we were discussing last time, we were talking about how our funding from the county had been slipping. And I think Ms. O'Connor had um, asked the question about what the state funding looked like. So I went back and I evaluated that. And I looked at essentially where we were as far as state education funding. Because if you try to do the entire state, there's a lot of initiatives that have been enacted over the years. It would be really difficult to do. But so I looked at the, the education funding for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And you can see we actually have slipped a little bit mm -hmm. as far we as have. Um, what we're getting from the state. If you calculate this out into dollars, um, I think our high point was we were at uh, right here. Down here 2009. Yeah. We were at, you know, 0.5 six five or six five six yeah. percent of the state and if you took that and allocated that to next year it would be about a 2.4 million dollar yeah. difference that, wow that we've essentially lost in state revenue was my understanding that which it was supposed to always be is that they're going to tie gambling back to the like to the school it system to be. I just but it was always supposed to be exactly. like that yeah I just actually read an article this yeah. morning that said that there was um, somebody had put in yes. legislation this year yeah <coughs> the gambling money would go back to education <coughs> to put the gambling money in a quote lock box right for right. education right and it would be above and beyond what that's the, the key above and beyond mm -hmm. what these um, exactly formulas. not to because use because it's for just that. like impact fees at the local level right right we get impact fees however if they use that to fund us they're not in addition to they're a part of part of exactly and that's yeah. really not what the understanding right of impact fees right. to school support is based on right so okay and then the other question that was asked was about what had happened with our enrollment during that same period of time. So again, I looked at the 10-year trend data, mm -hmm. um, and our enrollment as a percent of the total state enrollment, we have also decreased a little bit there too. However, we've grown by 104.5 students over that period of time, which is about a 1.4% increase in our enrollment over 10 years. Um, the state, however, has grown 4.5%. So that's why our percentage of state revenues has been slipping a little bit because our enrollment compared to the state. As Surprises well. me. I thought it would be a lot more than that in a 10-year period. Yeah. 
But when you look at the population increase in the county, that is so minimal as well. Our population in this county has not increased that much in 10 years either. Really? It seems to us it would have. Yeah. We have pockets where it has, but really. Right. And that almost always goes along with your enrollment numbers right. to an extent. Right. Yeah, I'm just surprised. I, I thought that it would be... Mm -hmm. be more than than a, a hundred kids I think our and I think our population has only increased about 12 to 1400 people over that 10 hmm. year period which seems unusual and don't quote me on numbers right. like I right. do yeah it's just interesting stuff, but yeah it's eye-opening really yeah well we've had a few years where we had you know pretty Jumps. significant increases right. yeah but then other years like between you know 13 and 14 right where we had a pretty significant decrease an exodus yeah then that takes mm -hmm. away anything you've mm -hmm. and then it pretty much stayed, right. has stayed right. stable right right and actually hmm. this year it's up again that's interesting students, so. we're up by 73 students yes hmm. okay so um that's all i have for the operating fund so I don't know if we want to stop here before we go into the construction fund. If you want to ask questions, um, you've all been given a copy of the, the draft budget book. So I don't know if there's, you know, particular things in there that you would like to ask about at this point. I think, my personal opinion, I would like to just move on into the construction. That way Bev might be here to, she might have questions about the mm, that's a good point. budget. Okay. that she might, you know, that she pinpointed that she'd like to talk about. Okay. Okay. So in the construction fund this year, um, we have two projects that are going to be, f that we have requested funding from the state that they have approved. That's correct. <coughs> um, and they're the first two listed there, the Churchill Elementary School Chiller Replacement <coughs> and the Ken Island High School Chiller and Cooler Tower, Cooling Tower Replacement. And you can see how much each of those are. Um, 118 from the county for Church Hill and 107 from the state. And then 784 and 699 for Ken Island. Um, the next is facility assessment. And as you recall, three years ago, we had a facility assessment. I'm sorry, um, yes. Was that three years ago? We yes, it, uh, we were the second county <clears throat> in the state to have a facility assessment done with uh, independent uh, auditor. We did receive, <coughs> I think it was three years ago, but yes, we did receive the results <coughs> two years ago, uh, May of 2016. Um, and what that was, the county, if you remember, the county commissioners were asking us for kind of a, a stable number uh, across the years instead of coming there and saying, hey, we need 20 million this year and 2 million next year. Um, and what this did was give us really about 1.2 million would give our areas that are poor or failed up to par, and then about 1.5 million a year, you know, going on from there to maintain our facilities. Um, and we have presented this to the um, the county commissioners. We actually met with uh, the county administrator, um, Mr. Pluski, and, and Dr. Kane, and uh, Ms. Landgraf, to myself, uh, and, and Ms. Pullen, to explain this. So basically, what you're going to see up there is 1.2 million for the areas, like I said, that failed to get those up to par. Um, then about 1.5 million. And the reason you see it in, do you want me to just keep on going, or you want to? All right. you, you absolutely can because all of this is all right. yours. <laughs> what, what, what you're going to see up there is the ADA, the substructures, substructure building shell. Those are where the um, county administrator and the uh, commissioners asked us to break it down into different categories so they could see. Um, when we, we got cut many years ago at $4.5 million, all of our, we, we no longer have money for, for paint. To paint the schools i want we want to get the schools back on a cycle of every seven years to paint them um, this facility assessment really gives us a 30-year blueprint which is, is something i'm excited about and not just for like painting but for the roofing um, our playground equipment lasts about 15 years and it, if you remember we've gone through a really robust construction period well we're out of that robust construction period we're into the basically the systemic renovations and maintaining what we have um, so, you know, you're not going to see that, you know, 30 million requests, you know, coming through all the time like there used to be, I shouldn't say 30, about 23 million. 
Um, so about 1.5 million would kind of get us to where we're at with that. Um, ADA structures, just to give you a few things, a lot of the uh, regulations have changed, um, you know, with the vans that pull up now and the handicapped parking spaces, you know, need to be accessible on both sides, not just on the right side. So we need to revamp those, um, some curbing issues to make it more um, user friendly. Substructure deals with basically here at the Board of Ed, we have a wall on the other side of the building that really needs a lot of repair done to it. Um, building shell for $100,000. Um, what we're looking at there, um, you know, downspouts, uh, brickwork, uh, the cupola here at this building that leaks, um, you know, replacing that, uh, which will involve the historic society because it, it's a historic building. Um, when you get down to, um, you know, interiors, um, that's where we're looking at like flooring, um, you know, ceiling tile, those type of things, site work. Um, that, that's a large ticket item, but if you go and look at some of our buildings in the parking lots, uh, they really need to be uh, either milled and overlaid or they need to be taken down to the bare and, and redone. Um, this will put us on a cycle of, you know, again, um, doing that, keeping those up to par. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, and site work also involves some drainage issues uh, that we would like to correct. The A&E fees, the $20,000, that would give us an allotment of money to, if we have to have um, documents that are stamped and approved, that would cover those areas. Um, I feel really good about the numbers up there. And what I did was I went through and uh, the superintendent, all of us, the executive team met with all the principals. I took their requests from the principals and matched them up and color coded them to what we had on our facility assessment. And it, 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 so I'm not, duplicating numbers up here, it's actual numbers. Um, so most of the areas they had asked for are covered into there. Um, one of the items that you see, uh, equipment and furnishing, I think Ms. Landgraf spoke maybe last time about it, we've never had a line item, I shouldn't say never, I, four or five years I've been here, we've not had a line item that has for furniture. So basically we're kind of scrounging around, going to fund balance, looking at those kinds of things, if we could possibly use that. We were fortunate with um, the renovation of Stevensville Middle School and uh, the new, um, when we constructed Sellersville Middle School to use all that furniture, it's, it's all gone. I mean, we're down to about four classrooms that we maintain um, at the warehouse of furniture. And it's, it's really something where we need to start putting that in there to get back up on pace. The um, classroom technology, you see 70,000. That's something else that we um, uh, spoke to um, the commissioners and uh, the county executive, um, I'm sorry, administrator about. That really, you know, we've instituted uh, smart boards, LCD projectors, all those things. Hey, they're, they're on a life cycle too. Um, and that would get us up to par, because right now what I'm doing is if something breaks down, I'm robbing out of maintenance to throw that into there to fix that, because all of the instruction and curriculum is, you know, kind of driven with that. Um, so um, classroom technology, security upgrades. We are actually- so What was the technology plan active directory? What does that mean? Can I get to that in a second? Oh, sure. Oh, I fine. thought you were just going- No, nah, I'm sorry. sorry. I was trying to de deal with my area and I was going to switch up okay, to technology. Okay, sorry. I, I just thought you were going area, down. But, um, We thought you were skipping that big number. No, 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 no. That's actually a really- You didn't want to discuss it. Slick. No, that's, no, I couldn't miss that big one there. Um, the security upgrades, as you know, We've gone from having like 40 cameras that didn't work the past four or five years to having over 400. Um, we we're currently in the phase now of all the uh, card readers, proximity, access controls um, that we learned from dealing with the reverse <coughs> evacuation. That 160, 163,000 there would finish up all security camera requests basically by the elementary school principals for inside cameras. Um, like I know Carol Camp, you know, I requested some at Graysonville. All of our middle school, high schools have cameras basically, you know, everywhere, you know. Um, elementary, just at the main entrances, and that's one request they've asked for. Um, custodial equipment, you know, you're talking for, um, you know, T7 ride-on scrubbers, those kinds of things. You're looking at $12,000, $15,000 a pop, um, <coughs> you know. We're not increasing our staff any. We're just looking to be a little bit more efficient and smarter in how we do things. Um, replacement buses. 
That actually, next in FY20, we would need to replace eight county buses, our own special tra um, ed transportation that we use. Instead of biting that off all in one year, I think it would be wise to do half uh, this upcoming year and half the, the next year um, of replacing those. And when we replace those, a lot of the IEPs now um, and some of the medical uh, <coughs> requests are air conditioning on the buses for special needs. So all of those will be air conditioned buses, um, you know, because we are transporting students to Baltimore in a metropolitan area, you know, we really don't want them sitting at the Bay Bridge on Friday afternoon, you know, in 100 degree weather on a bus. Um, so I think it would be wise to, to purchase four this upcoming year and four the following year. And we've done that before with the county administrators. And the 404 is four? Yes, ma'am. Great. They run about $100,000 a piece. What, um, what year are they at, though? They'll be 15. 15, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so really. Have to. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't a, you know, hey, we're kind of experiencing problems. This is, yes, we need to go ahead and do it. I mean, by the rules. Yes, that's correct. F the state years. allotted 15 oh. years, and right. that's it. Okay. Um, Okay, replacement of maintenance vehicles. We still have equipment and vehicles that are from 1988. Um, <laughs> not, not 1998, but 18, I mean, sorry, 1988. <laughs> 18, 18. 18. Um, they have to use their feet. <laughs> 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 poor, poor Jim O'Donnell was doing that for a while there. Um, this, this would really get us back on par of re a replacement program. Um, same thing like with the painting. Um, that we wouldn't be, you know, coming back requesting this every year. We could spread it out, um, you know, and have a cycle of every 10 years of replacing those. And we have some now that have 300,000 miles on them. Um, you know, I can tell you, mine driving down the road, the, the, <laughs> the uh, back door pops open, you know, <laughs> while you're driving down the road and all the lights. And, I mean, it's getting close to 300,000 miles on it also. Um, How many do you need to? This, this would be about four. This would be four? This would be about four vehicles. And I'm not talking we're getting Taj Mahal. No, 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 I'm no. talking like just, you know, basic yeah. replacement of it. So we, so we actually need about eight, but you're willing to do four this year and four next year? Well, four would do us good for a few more years. Oh, oh maybe okay. Go back. okay. It would put us in line to like maybe a replacement of like one vehicle every year. Each every, year, yeah, okay. Every year. Eight was the buses. Yeah, eight okay. was the buses. Yeah, I know. I was just, yeah, okay, all right. So um, this is all four in one year yes ma'am okay and that right. would get us back on par there have a replacement of one like every year okay okay the big number there um uh technology plan so if you recall um we are there is currently a five-year plan mm -hmm. all right we are in year four next year is the final year of the, the five-year plan there is 1.3 um, million dollars that the county commissioners have approved into that plan for next year all right that is included in that number all right okay so when I, <coughs> when I say final plan basically what we're looking at as a system and you know not just the technology but the CNI department the teachers and everybody are replacing um, all the middle school uh, devices which would also include Sellersville middle school fifth grade um, now, when, when I say we're in the final year, don't think of it as the final year because this is going to be an ongoing, whatever we do next year is going to affect for the next four more years because basically you get about four years, you know, out of the device. When you say device, you mean Chromebook? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, it, it doesn't whatever necessarily have to be that. whatever we decide okay. on. Okay. Um, I will tell you, I, I asked Mr. Combs, our technology department, to go through with each county of what devices they have. And if you look at it, the majority, most of them are Chrome uh, mm -hmm. books, Dell 11. The, the one area that I did ask him to look at was, as you all know, we have the bag issue, all right? Um, part of this would include, if this is the route we want to go, um, a case that goes over top of it. Basically, you know, we would go away from the bags. The case, you could drop it from 10 to 12 feet. It's not damaging it. You know, we've... I've seen them throw them <laughs> at the walls to see what happens. You know, just trying to go that kind of route and see what we want to do. But that 1.3 is really there for that. And we would also like to extend the warranty on the teacher's laptops, um, you know, so that they, they would be covered into that. And there's a couple ways with that 1.3 million that we could go. Um, if we wanted to say, okay, uh, $200,000 a year out of that 1.3, um, 
you could go that route and that would include the insurance for everybody. Like, so instead of asking each child to purchase the insurance or parents to do it, you could kind of divide that up. Yeah, so there's multiple ways we can go about this. So, I mean, I don't, that money is pretty much allocated already. Um, hang on a second, my notes disappeared here. Maybe, maybe I'm confused. So you're saying 1.3 and, and you're It's 1.5, so it's actually so, 200,000 uh, out of our budget, yeah. correct? Yeah, so yeah. the, okay, so when you look at that, um, extending the warranty um, for teachers' computers, that would also be um, replacing one-to-one uh, -one devices for all uh, middle school and fifth grade sellers all because, you know, they fall into that kind of... That was the first ones that they... Gray, yeah, mm -hmm. gray area. Um, so, so one second, I'm sorry. This is sure. all inside the 1.3? Yes. Okay. Um, and, and Josh has been meeting with, you know, uh, C&I and trying to get everybody's input into this. Um, because when we purchase something, we want to make sure that it already goes along with mm -hmm. the testing requirements that we have, um, the curriculum, you know, the software and all that. We don't want to venture out there where we're going to have to reinvent the wheel on everything. Um, now. Would this be any whiteboards or anything classroom technology-wise? Just student no, technology-wise? Yep. And teacher? That's correct. What their yeah. personal device type that, that's things That's correct, are. yes. Okay, thank you. Now, the, the $200,000 that would round that off to $1.5 million, that deals with uh, Active Directory. And as you know, we had the legislative auditors come through here. And one of the big points that they kept pushing to us um, was doing Active Directory. And Active Directory basically is kind of the Novell system that we have. So um, what we want to do is it would align with the, the systems that we have. So we have multiple, and I'm just kind of giving you a broad spectrum here. Think about all the security cameras. Um, think about all the different uh, instructional programs. Every time you got to come in, you got to log into that, that um, specific area. There's, so when you go in, you have to put up firewalls to protect against that. Active Directory basically would maintain everything under one system and all the firewalls are built into it. We wouldn't have to actually go out to everybody's computer, download a firewall or, or do that kind of stuff. It is, um, you know, vetted into that, that system. Um, so it would be basically a single sign-on um, process and it would really enhance our security um, issues that we possibly could have, you know, as identified by the legislative auditors. And this isn't something that, um, you know, other counties are not doing. I mean, Anne Arundel, they're all, you know. But he has it's, yeah. This is the first county. I've yep. been to it's a, it's a, would be a very labor intensive thing to, to get put in place. But once we have it in place, we would be able to really manage what we have. Because um, we sat in there for quite a long time. Uh, listening to the legislative auditors go over this type of, of um, area. I think it would be a very positive thing for can, us. Can you give me a simple um, description of how that security would be enhanced by that? All right. So every program that we have right now, when I say program, like... Um, Intervention, iReady, um, and then, and then you've got... Any of the, yeah, the curriculum. Power school. All right. That has to have an individual firewall presented to it. Security cameras has to have an individual one. The access controls. So we have all of these systems on our internet, and basically the technology guys are going through and looking at to make sure the proper firewalls are up there and listed. And you know that's pretty labor hard, intensive. labor intensive, and hard to do. This would encompass everything into one one program. Um, so it sort of lets programs talk to each other, and so one benefit of that also is one sign-on. So exactly. we use one sign-on, we would make sure that we have a powerful um, firewall and protects us from, you know, all of the different, um, well, viruses yeah. and folks being able to okay. hack into and, and that. Nothing is hack proof, 100% hack proof, but it definitely allows us more control with signing in and out of programs and programs talking to each other. Well, I would think that that would be an update improvement as oh, opposed absolutely. to what we're doing it now. Will. So it's not only an asset, 
time-wise, employee-wise, it's an improvement to our overall system, kind of keeping in today's world of technology instead of yesterday's. Correct. And it's also um, a recommendation from the legislative audit Thank findings. You. Thank so you. The firewall also is firewalls between, like a kid couldn't get into our security system, basically. So there's firewall internal. Oh, that would be upgraded, yes. To, yeah. to, like, if they've got a power school for what they need and then... Yep. Uh, okay. Nothing is 100%, so right, I, right. in 2018, yeah. we'll it's never smart. step out right exactly <laughs> and say and this, this would be a, never a, a one-time fee of giving, getting us to where a we need to be. Fee. This wouldn't be a $200,000 reoccurring cost. Sid, my question oh, is, sure. last year we had talked about um, doing away with purchasing and leasing these. Did we ever get a quote or anything on what it would cost to lease them instead of purchasing them? Because the leasee would be the person that would be responsible for doing all that, not us. I, I think Josh has a he's gone through and has all that information. I think that would be a good, um, yeah, a different discussion yeah. to, to bring that to okay. show you what they are. Because actually, I was kind of surprised by some of the different numbers and things that he brought to me. And, and also, he has a spreadsheet of what um, the other counties are doing. Um, and you know, is, are there fees associated with it? And um, Maintenance you know, packages, yeah. Yeah. how often he, we can refresh, uh -huh. yeah. for yeah. whom we yes. refresh. Yes. So I'd like to working. see that. Yeah, he's working. It'd be a nice, I mean, a, a nice be a good presentation. presentation. Yeah, because uh, we did, we, we said it last year that, you know, that we were coming to this, this five-year mark. Yeah. And maybe at the five-year mark, it's no longer feasible to purchase exactly. these computers. It is more feasible to, to yeah. get into a leasing company and, and let them have all the headaches. Uh -huh. Um, like you know. I said, but you also got to look at what the cost associated with that is. Exactly. But so yeah. Exactly. He, That's, yeah. yeah. I, like I said, he, we sat down for about an hour and a half this morning. He was kind of going over different things and showing me what he had put together. And um, I, I think it would be a great opportunity for everybody to decide on. And I'm also wondering if the county commissioners might put more in um, instead of the $1.3 million if they thought that we were leasing them and that we were that taking it. That was part it. of our startup, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that standard, Sid, to take the 1.3 that they've committed and include it in the 1.5 total? I mean, we don't have 1.3 sitting in our account anywhere, and we're not asking for an entire 1.5. That's the total of the commitment and the additional need. That's correct, yes, ma'am. And is that standard to list it that way? I mean, it looks like we're going to the county and asking for a new $1,529,000. We can, I mean, we can take that and word it differently. I'm hey, just this asking. Is, that's fine, yeah. Yes. We can take that and yeah. say, hey, this was because in the five-year plan. That makes a difference. Sure. So people, when they're looking when at they this see list, it. they sure. understand. Oh, that's a good idea. They gave at least us the county a commitment. It looks like the county commissioners are doing. Yes. Well, and not only that, they've committed that. Right. We're not asking for that again. Exactly. How long have they committed to doing uh, this? Well, <laughs> is this a? It's been but, since they started the Chrome. It was a five-year. The mm -hmm. original plan okay. was a five-year plan. Right. All um, that is in that five-year plan. Yeah. What then, happens if they decide not to do it? Well. We have new county commissioners coming in. That's, just, I mean, no, that's no, just true. what and is that's, true. That's something that's that true. needs to be looked at, leasing or purchasing. Right. Also of, and also, are you going to get that 1.3 every year? This every, year, or you know, would they years. say, hey, could you divide that's it? That's what I mean. There's, there's a whole lot of yeah. options yeah, with that's that. That's right. That's why. Um, yeah. That's why it's important, I think, to separate it. There was a lot learned yeah. over yeah, the yeah. Uh, yeah. the past five year. Well, I'm sorry, the past four year. Uh, plan that was put sure. together. Of, right, sure, right. Um, do's and don'ts and, right. you know, oopses. Um, well, part of it was that 1.3 that we're starting now to replace with. Originally, uh, the idea was that was what it was going to cost. Then that's when everyone, right, everyone would have it at that point brand new. So you're using that wisely to replace, but it really but does need to be it. recurring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to continue replacing. About yeah. every four years, you know, as far as so, I mean, the next would be the high school, you know. Um, right. I think the selling point on it, though, I think, too, is how well it was managed. Because, honestly, originally it was just to get the whole thing started up was five years. Yep. And did it in four by managing it well, I think. At least that's what I understand. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's gone well, but there's, there's been a lot of learning uh, involved with this. You know, I mean, you know, uh, some schools have bring your own device. 
Um, you know, I mean, so there's a lot that we learned, and there's also a lot as far as what curriculum and programs match up to our systems. Right. You know, so that I think that we've done a nice job of kind of bringing that into the area so that we're not purchasing something that is not compatible to right. our system. Yeah. But don't forget, you know, all of the state testing um, and, and all that that needs to be done <coughs> on, you know, the device. So when you're looking at it, you want to see what's the most compatible with that and what other counties are having success with right. based upon that. So. Are other counties purchasing their their computers or are they leasing their computers? There's, I went through this morning just a quick um, out of the like the 14 or 15 responses we had from the 24 LEAs, mm -hmm. um, 11 of them had purchased their own. Mm -hmm. um, one or two, I know there was one that had leased them, I think Baltimore County had leased. Um, and then several, I want to say several, two or three were um, bring your own device. Well, what were <coughs> the 11 comments? Um, do you have any comments on that as to how they felt about, you know, would they be interested in maybe now at this point, now that they're into it leasing also, or are they still interested in purchasing them? Um, let's see. Um, I mean, I had to go through them all, but just. And Arundel County had a basically a hybrid model where some were leased, some were purchased. Um, Baltimore County was leased. Um, Baltimore City, Calvert County, uh, Cecil County, Charles County, Frederick County all purchased theirs, and basically they were all. Um, excuse me, Chromebook uh, 11 is what they've gone to. Um, the interesting other part of that is uh, Harford County purchased also. Um, and then he has it also broken down. I can show you which ones allowed him to take them home, which counties oh, didn't, okay, yeah. which counties had fees associated with it. Um, it's a 27-page document. <laughs> okay. um, so it, it kind of goes through. I yeah. think it would, like I said, be a good opportunity to... I think that's a that's a good like idea a, to look a and see if presentation that's fine with Dr. King. I mean, so, to see if it um, would be so a, can you help me with a totally unrelated question to what all this was, but it is on the list. The final, at this point, estimate for the Graysonville Elementary Edition. I was thinking it was around the four point five range. Uh, when I went to the presentation, I think that's kind of where we were. Am, am I close? I believe you're close. So For the three was our commitment and the county yeah. made their commitment. Just because the statement came across to me that was completely a number out of the blue. And I want to be able to... I can get you the exact number. I, in my I, I'm head, it's right confident around that ballpark. That I will say said we were right around 4.3, 4.5. The project is going very, very well. It is very going well. well, and I'm real happy I'm with that. And that's why I don't like that. statements that are a little misleading especially when it comes down to dollars that we're responsible for now, we've had projects that have gone way over budget we have my very, understanding is this one has not yet uh, we have a very thank good you. gc we have very good uh, subcontractors on this great um, thank you the neat thing each week we have a uh, drone that flies over and takes i pictures. love that i love i've that. never seen a, a construction site that clean and neat and tidy. Well, I like the progress that we get to see with those drone pictures. Yeah. Ms. Pullen's done a very nice yeah. job. With she, this. Has, she, she has, she has. Okay, thank you. Yep. On page 41 in your budget book, mm -hmm. there's two line items actually that deal with grace and development. That's what I'm looking there's at. There's one under yeah. state funding mm -hmm. that's $1.2 million, mm -hmm. and then there's and then one under county mm -hmm. funding. Mm -hmm. that's, that's and and, and that's I'm real clear with funded that. Funded in the, in the current. Mm -hmm. yes. So when I hear a misstatement, I have to be able to at least justify my answer yep. right. to and some extent. The, the funding for. We actually have money in fiscal year 17 that we use that was part of the plan. Oh, right, exactly, exactly. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, so um, back to this. I think the only other thing on this list, well, two other things on this list, and I'm going to refer this one to Mr. Polusky. This is the textbook item. Mm -hmm. um, we're requesting $785,000 for textbooks. Sure. Thank you, Ms. Langra. I'd be happy to. Uh, we now have in a division of curriculum instruction, we have a four-year forecasting document. So what we've done this year is we've categorized and organized all of our instructional materials and have put ourselves on, typically uh, most school systems are on a five-year uh, 
upgrade to their instructional materials. We're being realistic and saying that we need to be on a seven-year cycle. So we've organized and forecasted over the next four years what we believe it's gonna to cost to upgrade our instructional materials. That number right there, 785, is the average over a four-year period. So you can imagine in some years it might be a million dollars and in other years it might be $200,000. Uh, so the average of those four years ends up being 785. I will tell you that uh, one of the biggest, two biggest purchases over the next four years will be uh, elementary mathematics. Elementary mathematics is now up. Uh, for adoption. It was actually up for adoption this year, but we held that off uh, because A, because of the pure cost, that would be about a half a million dollars, uh, and then you include professional development. Uh, we also have to consider how much change at one time. Uh, so we've kind of held off on that, but that is, that's a big number in the next four years. Uh, also our elementary reading program would then be up again. Uh, that's about a million dollars in and of itself. Uh, so those are two big costs over the next four years. I'd be happy to share if you really want to get into the details of you know, each content area and what we've projected year by year, but that is the average over the next four years of, of what it would cost. I'll find, uh, the last thing I'll say, some of our instructional resources are nearly 30 years old, uh, 14 years old, 15 years old. We have to get on a cycle to upgrade our resources uh, for, for our students. 30 years old to have an out, uh, that's a completely outdated resources, quite frankly, that's unacceptable. And uh, we don't have enough of because and, they're so old. Question that always comes up though is, you know, we're buying the computers. So sure. are these the elementary, primarily elementary books? Because the computer is supposed to tech book concept is supposed to Sure. Um, so so uh, to best. that, uh, we've uh, we've prioritized that everybody gets a little bit of everything. So you'll have everything from A P text to high school text to uh, middle school and, and certainly the elementary area that would be in there as well. Um, it's kindergarten. So there's a little bit of a balance here because uh, one, although everybody wants to go 100% digital and in some cases our resources that we're looking at are that way. In other cases, they're not. It is actually a, a, a textbook. When you get into some of our career and technology education courses, it's, it's a physical textbook. If you look at the research that's out there, uh, the research is really about blended. It's a little bit of both. It's not all one way and it's not all way the other. And I think that's something that we have to take a look into. The other thing that we're looking at as a cost-saving measure is what's known as open educational resources. As you know, there's a flood of resources out on the internet. <coughs> the danger with that is, is that they're not 100% aligned. And so that's the issue. So when folks talk about, oh, it's great because there's all these resources that are on the internet and they're free. Yes, that's true, but the danger we run into is it takes a lot of work to vet those resources to ensure that they're 100% aligned to the standards, and that's where we can get into misalignment, kind of come back to the curriculum audit and why all that language is important, um, but we're looking at that, uh, but that's intensive people hours to review that material to make sure it's aligned for teachers. Mr. Perluski, what is sure. it, third through twelfth that has... Uh computers now? Yes. It's still K through two do not have computers. They, well, they are, there's I mean, not the an classroom, individual device. But not. There, there are a lot of iPads. Right. Um, so one of the things that we're looking at, what's the current research that's out there? We've had a lot of requests. So when Mr. Pinder talks about the technology <coughs> upgrades, the $70,000 there, we've had uh, through our budgeting process with our principals, they've made requests at, at K to two. And so we're reluctant to say at one school wants, wants this device and another school wants this device device, what's the research out there that's, that's best for K2? Mm -hmm. And so you also have to look at developmentally appropriate. Uh, so a lot of our, of, our, of our students at that level are engaged in iPads, you know, the KRA, the Kindergarten Readiness Assessment, which teachers use, that's, that's given <coughs> on that device. Uh, but yes, 3 through 12, uh, they have a device, but remember only grades 5 through 12, they go home. Take them home, right. Uh, okay. We did not feel it was developmentally appropriate for three Third to four for that yeah. to go home. Right. Um, 
and it gives something for fifth graders to look forward to. That's right. And with, along with the blended model, a lot of the textbook books uh, publishers will have an online component. So they'll have the physical book with online components yes. to that book. So it sort of does both. You don't have to choose one or the other with interactive pieces. And, and, and to Dr. Kane's point, I would say that's almost standard today, that if you buy a physical textbook, it's coming with some mm -hmm. online component. And then some resources are completely 100% virtual. And does this include, are we buying any consumables? E yes. Uh, e well, it's a good point, Ms. George. When, when we go through the process of what we call single textbook adoption. So if elementary mathematics is up, then we'll seek out four or five vendors that say Queen Anne's County is up for middle, you know, elementary math adoption. We'll seek from vendors. The teachers will do the review process and then vet those materials, pilot those materials. So in that process is, is when it gets determined if there is a consumable <laughs> that would be a part of that. And then that would be part of our projection so we're actually, this number is our best guess at this moment on, on what those elements would cost. Then that's where we get in the negotiation piece with an individual vendor. If it's, you know, like an elementary science, there's an online component, there's a physical kit component, and there's a consumable component. Now we're in the position that we're able to look at all of our instructional resources that, that were organized to be able to see and project these are licenses agreements that we have to have every year or, or we purchased this over a four-year period. We know in four years that's up to renegotiate. So we're in a much better situation with our instructional resource, at least of knowing what we've got and what we're using um, in order to move forward. I just recommend we're, we are going to need to defend that 785 and... I'd be happy to. Okay. <laughs> As I want to have a better picture of what that money buys, you know, like mostly elementary for the new math coming out, you know, that kind of stuff it will help us right. defending Especially it. with the county commissioners yeah, knowing that they're giving us $1.3 million for computers, but maybe not made. realizing that it's K through the two that are the only ones that don't have the computers. Right. So we have to have, provide books but yeah. that 785 also includes our higher level grades the, the, that don't also need exactly, a book. Exactly, exactly. Because not, course not all that things has can to be done. Have right. the physical right. book. Right. Right. And I think so. that's the um, yeah. idea that what we have is outdated and we don't have enough of books we need to meet the enrollment right. level because of the age usually. Well, and, and when and they were quite purchased. frankly, we're 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 behind yes, in, in we're some behind. of our areas that yes. we have not kept up with. Exactly. And to put a resource in a child's hands that's thirty years old, um, that they have to share useless. with five people. We've identified new planets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> in, in a thirty-year <laughs> yeah. period. So uh, I would be honored, certainly under superintendent's leadership, um, to. Uh, maybe in our weekly update, if, <laughs> if you would like to see, we can link that in and you can see our forecasting of what specifically. That would be um, great. The, I'm just looking for some talking points in case mm -hmm. we were asked mm -hmm. about that. That's one thing the parents are like, what are you doing? You know. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, okay, and then the last item on that list, um, I added the band uniforms as a. We were wondering about them. that. See, <laughs> If the commissioners, you know, fund that, right. or if we need to, you know, bring that back into our operating budget to okay. fund that. Why, well, their question will be, why do we always put it on the construction budget? Just because. it's just a one time in 15 years, one, not okay. renewable. Right. Very good, very good. It's not an ongoing. Mm -hmm. My question would be, where would we put that if, if they don't? If they don't. Well, we would have what? to put it in the operating budget, but it would still come under a line item that would be a capital line item. Oh, okay. That's, I, that's what I'm, okay, budget. okay, yeah. all right, yeah. okay. Okay. Thanks, Robin. Mm -hmm. So essentially, that's our budget presentation for you. So at this point, we've given you, between today and last week, we've given you all kinds of background information, both at the county level and for the Board of Education. We've given you revenue projections. We've given you expenditure projections. And we've given you trend data um, that was posted to, um, and actually I printed a copy and sent that to you along with the budget book. Yeah. So now we need input from you. Um, to look at that. Are there things that we have talked about that you feel we should not be pursuing at this point in time? Or are there things that we have not talked about that you feel we should be pursuing at this time? 
and, and, and adding to that conversation, we really do need to talk about what the plan is going to be if, in fact, we don't get requested funding from um, the county. So what's the backup? Because I have committed to, and I'm sure you are on board as well, being as transparent as possible with regard to what we may need to do to make up for funding if we don't get our request. Not as a threat, but just the reality. Right. There are things I, that I well, could I suggest. I, They're I can, not going to I, accept that. I can that. tell you right now, $4 million over MOE is going to, we're going to get laughed right out of that building. But really could are. I suggest that's that, 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 that we do our so this is where we need to. That's this conversation. Yeah. We do our could we delete first and go to lunch. Yes, but um, can I make my suggestion? Twenty. Yeah. We do our deletes. We come up with a number and then we present our plan ideas if we aren't funded. There's no sense in doing a plan idea on money that we're going to cut out anyway or may cut That's out the anyway. process. So the process Sorry. is okay. we talk about what your will is to right. approve, uh -huh. and then we get down to a figure, mm -hmm. and then we present that. Mm -hmm. And then, but with that presentation, based on what you approve, right. then we say, OK, because they want to know what's what going to happen. Go. What right. would go. So Thank you. Where, um, where is the, uh, the teachers um, in all this? Because we haven't seen any requests from them. What do you mean? Has Mr. Farley met with them with negotiations? We don't have oh, anything. Oh. No, remember, we have that upcoming. So what we did was we gave you an estimate for the going, you know, what you've done historically over the past. So 1% okay. okay. and a step. Okay. So we've given you the estimate for that okay. um, in lieu of. And, and we okay. did mention that, too. And when are you, uh, when is Mr. Farley meeting with? I, I believe it's next, is it next week? I think we meet on the 8th, I think, yeah, that's okay. when they're going to present mm -hmm. their, oh, okay. their request. Okay. I think right. that was the date that we had set. All right. So we're going to break. And we did have a conversation with them to let them know that that's what we were doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So we'll take a break until uh, 1 p.m., and we'll be back at 1 p.m. Cool. Okay. Uh, welcome back to the afternoon session of our work session. I'm sorry. Um, just wanted to let everyone here know that um, we've received an email from Greg Todd that um, asking Dr. Kane and Aliyah San and um, two board members and Robin to <coughs> join Steve Wilson and Jack Wilson. Uh, for a lunch on the second Tuesday that they meet. Uh, this is just um, so that we can get together. We had requested uh, speaking with them a few months back. And so just want to let all the board members know that uh, Sharon and myself have volunteered to do this with uh, Dr. Kane. What was the date you guys are going? Um, we're going to, okay. yeah, we're going to find out for sure. Okay. Okay, so Dr. King, would you like to? Uh... So we just need to begin our discussion about the priorities that we want to um, consider in the in the budget request, and really have some discussion about well, number one, where your questions lie, number two, what are priorities uh, for you, because really at this point, you know, we don't know uh, what the end is going to look like. But what our responsibility is, is to request funding for our priorities. The things, number one, that we have to do in, in order to do business first. Of course, you know, salaries is always a big ticket item. Health care is a big ticket item. These are things, these are costs of doing business. And following that are benefits. the, I'm sorry. Benefits. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. is part of the salary package. Um, and, and part of that has to do with our priorities. So we've introduced some staffing um, requests, some program work requests uh, that we've gotten from schools, a little reorganization, in particular one that um, has a funding impact with the Public Information Office, as you know. And um, we've made some other moves, I'll say, for example, we wanted to move technology from under operations and put it under instruction. Um, it doesn't cost anything. That's just a reorganization, which is part of my prerogative, but I just wanted you to know about it. Um, and uh, 
So we need to have some conversation with regard to the priorities that we put forward to you. Um, so can, can we start with <coughs> questions? Can we go around the table and start Absolutely with questions? We can. And, and I heard earlier today, uh, Ms. Harlow, that you may have a desire to go through the, bu the budget book uh -huh. page by page. And okay. if you want to start there, if, if that's going to keep us in order okay. from going from one item to Bouncing another around. I think item. That that's, um, I think sure, that's a great start. idea right. because we need, to, we need to stay on focus as kind to of all of us yep. being on the same thing. So that's sure. probably. And it's easy when we have a stopping point. To exactly, up. exactly. So um, yes, I think that that's probably where we should start them. And anything none of us have a question about, we can just keep on moving, right? Right. Great. Right. Okay. I do have one question about that maybe this happened before I got here. Was the Maryland Healthy Working Families Act, did you come up with a potential figure for that? We were working on it. Where are we with that? Yes, we did actually come up with a potential figure for that. And it's it depends on how you look at it because if we were to take all of our um, – employees and there's there's a limit they have to work 24 hours a week in order to be eligible and there's a couple other qualifying things in there um, if you take all that into consideration and everybody received one hour for every 30 hours that they work and they got paid for that or they used that time next year then that would be about a sixty thousand dollar item the question is are they really going to use that? They might earn their sick leave next year, but when is it going to get used? So do you put the full $60,000 in the in the budget, or do you put some portion thereof, assuming that some of them will not use the sick leave that they earn? So, But it's about a $60,000 item based on the number of hours that people <coughs> worked last year, assuming that they'll work the same number of hours in the future. And Ms. Landgraf, have you had conversation with any of the CFOs um, across the state with regard to how they are <coughs> estimating the cost? Um, I have, and actually I have a meeting set up next Thursday, I believe it is, where all of the, um, the counties on the eastern shore are going to get together in Caroline County to have that discussion mm -hmm. and how we're going to track it and how it's going to be implemented in each of the counties. So we're, you're estimating about 60000 Okay. All right, so, so where are we going to start? Page 3, 4, 5? Uh, we can start with page 3, yeah. um, unrestricted revenue page. Um, top line there is the appropriation from the county and the one point, the, the requested increase um, 1.389 that is what the maintenance of effort number is and then you can see there what the request over maintenance of effort would be if we kept everything that's currently in this budget right in which would be almost four million dollars <coughs> nine million uh, the state funding they've given us their preliminary projections and you can see what they are we expect an overall increase in state funding of three hundred twenty nine thousand dollars and then other funding the only thing that dropped out there was <clears throat> excuse me how much we had put in um, in the current year out of our fund balance to, to keep those um, media specialists in the budget right. for that state increase <clears throat> um, so the three Point nine is just over county MOE, right? Is that state increase considered in there too? Or, I mean, with the bottom line figure of what we're going over, if they only gave us MOE, if they only gave us MOE and we got the state money, then we would have one point seven, right. one point eight million dollars new money next new year, money. right? And right now, with everything that we have in this budget, um, we're looking at a. Five point four million dollar increase in the, okay. in the overall budget. So the three nine five six is <coughs> is really over the addition. That. Okay, thanks. Okay, all right. So so the next really two pages are really just summary pages. pages. Actually, the next three pages. Mm -hmm. um, so if we flip over to page seven, this is where we get into the meat of what's in the administrative budget. Right. <clears throat> Um, we've got salary increases in here, and then under the first line item there, Central <coughs> Office Administration, that would be where we would add in the public information um, 
officer and the multimedia specialist would be and the communication specialist that's where those three would be and the revamping of that so there's a hundred out of that hundred and sixty set uh, sixty eight thousand increase 125 of it is for basically revamping that office I really feel that and this is just my personal opinion um, we don't have any room currently in a budget request for very many additional positions that we don't currently have. My personal opinion is priorities are student classroom teachers, and if I'm correct, we have 12 built into this budget, 12 requested new teachers, is that correct? Six. Oh, six. Oh, six. They, re they requested 35 across the board. Right. Where did I get 12? There's overall, there's 13 new positions in this budget, um, and we can... Maybe that was it, six of which were teaching positions. Correct, okay. because there was two okay. um, mm -hmm. maintenance positions, there was a... Uh, oh, yeah, when you broke it down trainer. to that, yeah. What's that? APs. Yes, um, assistant principals. Right. Well, I was going to get to that. Yeah, when yeah. we get to that, we'll... I was going to get to that in a minute. The classroom teachers, they were, they were both program teachers and classroom Is one that um, uh, Kent Island Elementary School, I think that one was, might have been a second grade, uh, Kennard Elementary School, I think fourth grade, uh, uh, Stevensville Middle School, ELA, and we may have a, a solution for that not quite sure, um, Centerville Middle School for Math, Queen Anne's uh, High School Computer Science, and uh, 0.5.5, which equates to 1.0 ELA and Social Studies at the high school, Queen Anne's. So it was two main, two, two maintenance people, six classroom teachers, two assistant principals, that's 10. Where were the other three positions? Oh, PIO was one. Help me with the other um, driver two. trainer. What's the driver trainer for? Driver trainer. drivers. Yeah. Oh, somebody yeah. to train the bus drivers. Okay. We used to have two. We made a budget cut down to one. It's okay. It's been a struggle. Okay. 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 And the last one would be. There are six additional teaching positions. Uh huh. Two assistant principals. Those are nurse. both at the high school. Nurse. Nurse. Oh, nurse. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank. Are we able to put that up yeah. on the? Two maintenance. One driver trainer. You can you pop that up there? Yeah. Is that yeah. technology at the high school? Is that the one that Ages everyone is sending the emails because Ken Island has it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's a must. I really think that it's important to focus on positions that are going to affect children directly first. Absolutely. Yes. Well, first, and then grow from there. I, I, I agree, Jay. So if we prioritized those 13 that's how I'm saying that it. way, that's how I prioritize it. As right. I, I the ones agree. That are most important are the ones that are working with children directly. I agree. Yeah, then I agree. We can too. Then we do that. that. That's right. However, we are discussing the APA site with the nurse. <laughs> and when we hop over to the principals, but wait a minute, we haven't hopped. Over I, there I know, yet. but th th there again, <laughs> that's going to be a part of the direct impact on students. Well, no, I mean working directly with students. Oh, gotcha. You know, like yeah, like a gotcha. classroom teacher. Classroom teacher. What I'm saying is mm -hmm. number one priority. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. I agree. Okay. And I guess what where we go with that procedurally is we make it clear to her those are the priorities, but if all of those positions are important, they could show up in the budget. We get them all. proposed budget, but then that's where we start eating away at them if we don't get that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Based on our priority. I feel like we have to pull everything out. Right. Right. Um, right. So but we still, we should really, we have to down this some. We do. Five, that they're not going to fly. That's um, not going to fly. I, I'm just thinking from a. You're talking $3 million over from a, almost 4000 from, from the standpoint yeah. of someone who represents the constituents and the taxpayers of this county. Right. We have a fiscal responsibility to put forward a budget that is as fiscally responsible as right. we deem we can. Right, exactly. Two years ago, it was around the $4.5 million mark. 
Last year it was 1.6. We historically know how both of those budgets ended up. We've been coached to put forward our bare bones minimum that we need to status quo and any improvements we feel are dire. Not what we'd really like to see, what we must see. Right. So if we put forward 1.6 last year and 4.5 the year before, we need to justify what we put forward this year based on our needs. And I don't think jumping from 1.6 as our needs last year <coughs> can be reflected this year in a four point whatever or right. three point whatever request. I think we need to be backpedaling towards um, no fluff, no, ad no big additions, no big new departments, no big new categories. No big cushion. I agree. I mean, I, I, I wish, though, that I like to present, I, I mean, ultimately, it would be wonderful if we could present this, say, this is what we need. Yeah. Unfortunately, we know what we're going to get right. publicly slammed for doing it, even though that's what we need. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's not right, but... It's Not like, down from it's, 35. I know. I mean, it's, this is like right. such a, way it's, down. It's, you're right, in such a right. conundrum. Like, it's like... Every year we're only asking for bare bones. How can we ever improve? And we can't. And right. it's so frustrating. Yeah, it is. It is. Because the the classroom teachers are, we have increased enrollment of kids. I mean, the, right. that's what we need. That it has to be. It has to right. happen. That's right. right. That's right. So, Absolutely. And, yeah. and then when you look at all the stuff, the superintendent's narrowed it way, way down. Right, right. When you say PIO, I mean, it, you think about it, what is our problem? It, a lot of communication problems we had. Right, absolutely. So I mean, and and then we're always asking her to do more, and then we identify in our emails to her that we've screwed this up. You know, we didn't hear about this. I mean, simple right. things like that. A PIO, an extra person doing what? I agree. Yeah, but that's, I mean, if 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 we had the money, it's like you can't go to Disney World if you can't pay your mortgage. You know what I mean? Right. Yes, I want to go right. to Disney World. I want this budget right. to be fully right. funded. Right, right. But, but, you but know, as, as, as far as that's a new one. As far as that's a new one. Leave it to Jen. Go, <coughs> that you're going to Hershey Park. Can we get by with? Can <laughs> we get Mill by Park. with two <laughs> in the department rather than three? One being a director. Can we make improvements within our teaching staff with? six classroom teachers even though we've been asked for 35. Th those are our challenges so. And those are all also our most important. Absolutely. That's what we're, Absolutely. we need to fill those positions before we fill anything. I agree. And we've always known that we have problems when we add people to central office with our county commissioners. Yeah, right. Also, you know, they, but they already they, think we're heavy at the administrative that's right. end. And that yeah, is that's always correct. the place yes. that they want to see cuts. That's exactly right. Always. And our constituents so, feel the same way. So part of, um, and I don't mean to cut anybody off. No, no, please. Part of the rationale behind the positions that you see here, one, yes, need for students. That's first. That's very clear. Um, but the other piece is in listening to the public when they spoke very clearly in the budget survey. And the public was interested in low class sizes, you know, so, and that was one of the considerations here. Now, when we have situations where the class size doesn't warrant, you know, that course to be continued, then we take right. that action accordingly. Right. But that's what you're seeing here. And what you also want to be cognizant of is to show the actual cost of central office, which we are well within a, a normal range. I mean, we've got we just like anybody yeah. else. So, <laughs> so I know, so I'm, what I'm saying is I'm confirming your argument. Right. Um, and I'm also acknowledging the perception that is out in, you know, in the county government with the fact that, or, or the notion that this district is top heavy. When you show the data and you show the numbers and you show where as transparent as can be about the cost of central office, it is nowhere close to absorbent, exorbitant. In addition to that, 
we got so many people trying to do so many things that we are we're borderlining on ineffective and in a, we've been slammed areas. for that in the audit yeah. absolutely exactly we have an audit to support that statement dr kane thank you very much for bringing yes, that forward exactly so i i am of the mindset and and it's your will because i'm not i don't vote <laughs> <laughs> I, I relay the message right, uh, right. but it is, it's your will but if you don't ask for what you need you're not then you're it. not ever going to get it. That's right. correct. And if and if we're good, if, if our language for this district wants to be status quo, if that's what we want to have, then we keep doing, we keep getting, we get zero. And I don't agree with that. We exactly. want status so quo exactly. and what we, we need. We don't want status quo. We want, we want what we beyond. need. <laughs> status quo has never been what we need. Exactly. That's right. the issue. Exactly. <clears throat> so, you, you know, you weigh that against being fiscally responsible and you put your information out there for all to see and to question and let the chips fall where they may. But I think the mindset of not asking for what you need for fear of somebody thinking that you are being extravagant when you have an argument that, that you know, doesn't support extravagance, I think that is the wrong approach. So. No, no, I didn't mean to portray that. I meant that we could, we could support a fiscally responsible attitude towards whatever we put forward and be able to support the need for and why the current status quo is not meeting our need. That, that's, I think, it in a nutshell. Um, so again, I know that we've got these positions, but like finance department on page seven, 6.0, is that a half a position? Is that a new position? I know your department well, is only one that's person. Six people. Yeah, that's oh, my, six people. Okay. that's my question okay. because now we got $2,000. Do we $2, have six people in How many people right are now? in these yeah. positions now? We do have six yeah. currently. These, these yes. are already, okay. all right. these are already people in employed with not us. increasing the okay no, the only one that is an increase there would be the multimedia and it says medial but media right. position a specialist one. that would be that would be the one position that was increased and then some of these other positions the public information officer and the communication specialist okay those, those they salaries all... will have changed some okay right but there, it's not an additional current. position okay the 14 under Secretary Clerical. That's what I was talking down. about, yes. Okay, and that's how they're broken down. There's one in the superintendent's office, there's four in. And there are all, all these people are already all employed right. here. Yes, they're okay. already employed. Okay, okay. That's, that's what I was okay. asking. And that's why we don't see any increase out beside them. The right. But we do the see the 33. Well, there is no, an increase. There, the, at, the, at the top, we do. Right, but she said that was this was an ad, multimedia specialist. It would be a brand is, name. Is an additional that's position. The yeah. Yes. It, that's the reorganization of the So, PIO So I think office. that's what I would like to see out of this list. Which ones are new? So this one is new. Multimedia specialist is an additional position that we don't currently have, correct? Okay. Correct. And then... Um, all these other positions we have, right? And the only thing that's showing here as salary increases are where we have put in money for what might come through right. negotiations. New and um, okay. increases. Okay. Right. So then, when we get to um, fourteen clerical, those all exist. Yeah. We're only going up by thirty-three thousand nine hundred and twenty-one dollars. But why are we going up thirty three thousand nine hundred twenty one? It's all salary improvements. Salary. For, uh, those fourteen people will get in <coughs> salary increases that will okay. equal thirty three thousand. Okay. Okay. Are they not on the step schedule? They are. Or, that okay. Would be okay. Their that step. would be their step. increase. That would be their step and their salary. And their if there's a percent. No employee. additional one, positions, one, one. but is it the one one one? One and one. And Just one and one, not one right. one not one. Right. Not additional for those that didn't get. Correct. Yeah, I think we had to back off. Robin, what okay. is uh, Mr. Strait's title? Mr. Strait is currently the public information officer. Oh, that's the Coordinator, job. Coordinator, Coordinator of public information. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm All just right. assuming he would be multimedia since he's. And then Dr. <laughs> and we don't want to. Dr. Talk Pearson's specific which was personnel. Was yes. No, I just was yeah. wondering what his that's title was. I was wondering in breaking that's down all. like the teaching staff, if we would then say, okay, well, this would be a priority and this wouldn't, so we wouldn't be looking at a $492 number. When do we maybe talk about that? <laughs> the classroom teachers? Oh, she just said we're not going to get into specific personnel. No, no, no. Oh, you I mean no, individual no, I names? Oh, yeah. I thought you meant yeah. positions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering what Mr. Strait did over there. 
That's all. <laughs> okay. Right. So we good on salaries so, yeah, there? I so we've so. got legal services. We've talked about the testing. We've talked about the other contracted services, which would be the third-party administrator for the 43B 457 plan. So, and I'm just looking at increases. So, if you have questions on right. any of the other items on the page, please yeah. stop me at any point in time. All right. But so, that's okay. easy for us to figure then, because we know not increases our MOE basically. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. So the next page, the only increase we have is mileage, and we've talked about the increase in the, the mileage rate has gone up. And then on page 9, the only increase that we have is administrative office equipment. And again, we've talked about that. So overall in administration, we're looking at a $253,000 increase. Why did we have um, administrative? Oh, that's the furniture, correct? The, the administrative office equipment? Yes. Yes. Why wouldn't that be in capital? It's furniture. <coughs> Well, there is an operating. I mean, the replacement of you but know it's not something chairs you replace, or like, every year, right? I mean, in administrative. I well, mean, no, but there's probably some that need to be done okay. every year. I'm you know, just curious. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's inclusive of classroom furniture. No, this oh, is oh, just oh, this where is are we? I'm sorry. Oh, office. Where's that? Where's that? Yeah, where am I? Page nine. Page, Page nine. Page nine. nine. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. So then right. on to page 10 is just a summary of mid-level administration. We had an increase of 1,000 for other charges. I'm always skeptical, you know, just wondering what an other charge is. <laughs> um, if you go back, because it's, this, page 10 is just a summary of <coughs> the entire section. Okay. So if you flip through to page 12. Oh, okay. Oh, it's, a, it's ahead mileage. of time. Okay. Right, right. Gotcha. It's in front of the okay. section. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So, oh, okay. page 11. This is, we've got a lot of things going on on page 11. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay, so principles, we've added one, and this is where we were requesting to move the um, program manager for anchor points to a principal position. And then under assistant principles, we actually have added 10 to this line item. Um, that would be the eight elementary school teacher specialists that would be moved to assistant principals. Oh. And then the two additional um, assistant principals, one at each high school. So and that's 10 and that we currently have eight. Okay, that's where you get the 18. Yeah, and it's right. not Sorry. that the, um, we're talking positions, not people here. Right. So when we say right. move teacher specialists to APs, we're not literally speaking about moving the people. We're specifically speaking about moving the position, changing the position. And that was and what seventeen thousand dollars per move, wasn't that on the no, one slide? That was no, just that the was APA for the one was, APA. APA was the only one that was singled out. But that's nine hundred forty-four thousand dollars. Exactly. Exactly. That's a that's lot, a lot of, of classroom teachers. That's a lot of money. Well, two, uh, two of them are full it, to move those High teacher school. specialists to assistant principals, the, and I looked at who, you know, the positions, what's currently budgeted for right. these teachers, mm -hmm. it's about $160,000. Mm -hmm. But you're taking all of that out of instruction and moving it to mid-level administration. Mm -hmm. So the, the total okay. dollar figure that you're moving to mid-level administration. I, I just don't know that we can support a no. request for an assistant principal at every school I, I I if personally if you're asking me I say no to the additional changing program manager to principal at APA due to the fact that it's not a school correct um, we had that argument last week and right now hundred and sixty thousand dollars that's two classroom teachers correct and to change just to change, change teacher the eight. specialist yeah to the eight APs. yeah I, and and i also have a hard time supporting an extra one at each high school especially I, if we have academic deans we well, have academic deans but i need to hear the the reason for that because we're, we're talking discipline right for the assistant principals at each high school high school right. so if uh just to remind us where we were last year that uh due to the deficit that we had to make up of 1.5 million dollars um, we had to 
we had to get into people. We had to we had to cut positions. Uh, so we had cut the assistant principal out of the annex at Kent Island. Uh, we also cut an assistant principal out of um, the restructuring of that with Queen Anne's County High School or at Kent Island High School. Since then, what we've learned is that the restructuring from the campus school to be able to facilitate an assistant principal at the annex, which we've done. We've moved an assistant principal Correct. out. So we're down an assistant principal uh, at Ken Island High School. We have a... Uh, yeah, that's, that's justifiable. Yeah. I, I yeah. agree with that. I, oh, I, okay. I thought you wanted yeah. justification, okay. no, I, too. I, I think that that is... Um, but then the, the one to Queen Anne's, why do we need one? To, for equity? Or we have enough at Queen Anne's? Well, there, there is a little bit of an equity piece, but I think there are also some unique challenges at Queen Anne's County High School. Um, that was a request from the school. Um, there's also, as we've talked about, expanding um, with early college. Uh, I think there's going to be more of an opportunity there from a leadership role um, to be able to oversee that. Wouldn't the um, academic dean take on that role? Well, and our guidance counselors. <coughs> well, there's, I, it, will they be a part of it? Absolutely. But I also think that there needs to be, you know, another administrator that would oversee that as well. Um, and right now we're using specialists. Well, fill in as a not at the high school. No, no. Oh, oh, high school. High school. I'm sorry. I'm we're talking about high school. I, I'm here. sorry. Thank you. So does that make equal? Mm -mm. Just curious. Yes. Equal yes. Number if, of APs if, at both if, schools. if that was added, that's correct. That is correct. But, I mean, uh, we don't have an annex up here. I mean, that's kind of, uh, uh, that, that's really, I think, pulling oh, no, I, I know that. I, I, that's what I'm trying to get at. I, yeah, I, I, the I, campus for Ken Island High School matches the APs for Queens? With, with, with the request would add, it, would add the assistant <coughs> principal back. Yeah, no, that would be fine because I think two assistant at each high school is equitable. Exactly. Granted, Ken Island would technically have three because of the annex. Yeah. But yeah. they However, would be at the I mean, annex. That's separate. 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 Yeah. And they, yeah, they would be at the annex all day, yeah. correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, right. yeah. Yes. That's I mean, right. we've, we've basically have moved an assistant principal over to annex to right. cover that. Right. So, so she we're is down basically at the main she is basically doing <laughs> the correct. ninth grade. Okay. That's correct. what. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm this, okay with giving Ken Island high school. I'm okay with doing that. So that's two. Because that's a need. That would be three for Ken Island High School. Because I mean, there we're one asking for two no. new ones. Right. We're asking one for Queen Anne's and one for, for Ken, Ken Island. Island. I'm okay Ken with Island Ken Island. Ken Island three, but one's in a different yeah. location. I'm okay, I'm good with all that. Because we so have academic deans at both two. schools. But we're not, ask, we're not asking for two. Why we want another. We would only be asking for one help at Help us justify Island. why we need another assistant principal at each high school, including the main, one as the main campus at Ken Island. Well, he just did. He just said it's for the new. No, no, he right. said. So, so at Ken Island is to bring them back to where they were last year because we eliminated that position right. as a to cost saving measure to make up the, the, the 1.5. See, there's only yeah. one at there's only one at the high school right now and then one at the annex no, she, at she, Ken she Island. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. No, I don't think Queen Anne's. No, I don't, I don't so agree. So we're only really thinking need, as a board, we're thinking in need of one. I mean, right, if at Ken Island to put at back to what Island. we took last right. year. Right, right. Okay, we're all on the same page with that, right? <laughs> Are we all on the same page with that? Yeah, I, yeah. I just think that's much easier to justify. Absolutely. It, it, just, but just so that you're aware, the needs at Queen Anne's High School, I think, I don't even need to say it, are significantly different. different. Yes. from the needs I agree with that. at Ken Island High School right. and that was a justification for them asking for that position. We, do we have a problem that we need to? Yeah, I'm not hearing what, I, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I guess I don't understand what the and, and, problem is. And, and again, I can speak from a couple of months of experience, okay. but from what I understand, um, the behaviors and the management of students um, was significant prior to a change that you made in administration mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. It is significantly better, yes. um, but it is taking, you know, every second of every person's um, time that they don't always have. At Queen to, Anne's. To, yep, at Queen Anne's to, to manage that. Um, I would say... Uh, how many would, students do we have on site at Queen Anne's? About 1,100. And how many on site just at about, the main just campus at Island? They're just about 1,200 each, mm -hmm. give or take. The physical plan, obviously, is a, is a little bit different, but I agree right. with the superintendent. Right. There is a, 
Um, there's, there's, there's a greater need. For th there is a greater need. We, we've also looked at administrative support. restructuring athletics there. We've done the pilot, which you recall, <laughs> which has alleviated some of the support for Did the administrator. Did you get your forehead? Um, Maybe we took that. Maybe review for the new. I think we took the athletic director. They were they wore two hats at one point. Correct. And, and if you look at the assistant principal, uh, if you look at Mr. Harding and what he does at at uh, Ken Island, the vast majority of what he does is athletics. Okay. Uh, right. And and that requires a lot of his time, where he's not doing some other instructional things. Um, but we've piloted some of that at, at Queen Anne's in a different structure. But I say that to say that we're trying to alleviate more support for the administration um, yeah. to support the student body in which they're responsible for leading. And I thank you for that because that has reprioritized my list now. My assistant principal prioritization has changed just based on what you two have said. So I appreciate that. Um, so in Queen Anne's, let me, not to go, go away ahead. from that, go Queen ahead. Anne's we have the assistant, what is the organization that's different than Ken Island? The assistant principal is also the athletic director. So at Ken Island, um, Mr. Harding is, is the athletic director. Right. At Queen Anne's County High School, we piloted this year where the athletic director is part-time teaching in the classroom, English, and then part-time being the athletic director. So they gave up some of their planning or their you know, duties as far as teaching to be able to take on some of that responsibility. The assistant principal there still oversees athletics, but the reason we did that was to alleviate some support to the administration for operations of the school. Right. So how is that going for the, uh, the individual that's teaching and learning? Yeah. <clears throat> it's going very, very well. Really? So that's a good... Um, you know, with anything, it's about having the right person for that particular job. Sure. And I'll say it, Ken Allen, it works for them, what they're doing. Um, and Queen Anne's, it has worked very well this year, um, doing what we're doing with that. I can't say enough about Mr. Wagner and what he's done there. Um, I, my recommendation is that we do the two high school assistant principals, one at each high school. I'm not in support of the other eight assistant principals at this time. I, I think what, if my person is, I just don't think we need that extra one at Queen Anne's. I agree. Right? Only because you have broken a guy free with this pilot program, mm -hmm. so he is a dedicated assistant principal. And, Unless we have something that we're having to solve, maybe it might be necessary. But might I is, think it may be necessary next year. But right now, but you know, with everything settled out, why don't we table that until next year? That would be my recommendation. I agree with that. I do too. Yeah, actually I actually do too. So we're back to one support for Ken Island High School. <coughs> But the TS is to the, to the AP. I still think it's a non-starter. I'm sorry, the what? The teacher specialist to the uh, I agree. AP. I just can't I, support I just, that. Not me neither. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's just hard for us to defend. Yeah. I, I have a, I'm not in support of the um, <coughs> Ten teachers level to at the, the APA no, either. Me neither. Um, now, just it's so not you a know school. that if we do that, what we're just suggesting, we're reducing that number by $264,000. Mm -hmm. Including the APA as well? Um, if we keep that one out too, no, that's a no. That was that, that's a oh, okay. different line. We're talking okay. about this yeah, line I'm right only here. Talking about okay. Assistant principals. Okay. Very good. So we are um, going to go with a recommendation of one. Okay, so when we take out the the AP, the eight APAs for elementary schools, that's going to reduce that number significantly. Significantly. Oh, yeah, I have 10. Except. It's well, only won't eight. It, won't, it, eight. won't it reduce it well, by 160,000? 10. It was 10 total. Well, no, because. Oh, it'll even be more than that? It'll be, it'll be 500 or 700 and some thousand because the entire oh. salary was moved from the instructional budget into this. Oh, I guess I was saying. So the 160 oh. was just the difference mm -hmm. between 
current salary and APA salary. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. The, so this is significant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's, exactly. it's going to be a seven hundred thousand dollars. So how change. many? How many? Because I wrote down ten teacher specialists to change two to at the high school and eight at the other schools. Oh, okay, yes. okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, but but the net really is one hundred and sixty. It's two sixty two, right? Because if you take away one of the APs, that's one hundred and one. And then, if you remove the 160, would have, which yeah, really the net would, exactly, right. would be right. But that the difference between seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars right. and 160 is going to move back to the instructional part of the budget because currently it's been taken out of there. Right, but it's not new money that no. we're no, 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 no. What no. I'm saying is the right. net. Yes. Right, exactly. Right. You should exactly. say we saved 700. No, we didn't. No. No. <laughs> no, not that. We saved 160 no. on that. So it's 860. Well, we saved 262. Yeah. Yeah. Add, and yeah. two APAs. Yeah. Okay. Or two okay. APs. Okay. All right. All right. So, really, in this case. So, what it boils down to is that. Uh, we don't Five support, teachers. we support one principal, I mean one assistant principal at Kent Island High School, right. but we do not support um, changing eight teacher specialists to assistant principals at our elementary schools. Correct. No, Correct. Nor, nor the or program the Queen manager. Anne's County High School. Manager right. yeah, to the, support. Yeah, right. Or yeah. right. the APA. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's going to take it to 279. That's going to take it then. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, then in keeping with that, the nurse comes into the APA thing too. So that can be taken out. We have four schools, five schools in Centerville. One, two, three, four. We have fire department right back here. Do we need an on-site nurse for APA based on the size of the town of Centerville and where our emergency services are located in collection in correlation to it's, it's not a school. school. What APA is is that something <coughs> that we've proven that we oh, really oh, okay. need on site. There was a request from the post. Right from last week. Well, I think one of the things that we've been looking at and, and certainly uh, the program audit that we've just done is looking at how we can <coughs> provide more wraparound services oh, to yes. students. And I think that's where this request is coming from, um, that although we do house students there, that there is no part-time nurse that, that's on side to provide um, direct assistance to that school. Does a nurse come? So students take meds there or have to be administered meds. Students get sick there just like they do at any other facility. Right, and how are we handling that now? There's, there's how no are the meds one. dispensed now? <laughs> There, there's no one um, there now if there's a an emergency they have the nurse from Centerville Elementary um, can come, come and over. support but we don't have any students that in the course of their day have to take a medication in that building I'm sure that we do so that's what I'm asking what nurse comes in and does that there is not a nurse that comes in to do that the teacher the student takes that on his own or possibly the uh, uh, program manager we actually have students in charge of their own medication in there? No, no, no. Program, oh. program manager. Oh, 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 I, sorry, I misunderstood. I thought it was, gotcha, 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 gotcha. That's why I asked that question. Mm -hmm. um, Is there another way we can do that? Like, I mean, I know elementary schools need their nurses, but what about a nurse coming over once a day? Or CNN. Sorry? A certified nurse assistant? Somebody to, to do, which costs less than an RN, is my point. Well. Uh, that's a slippery slope, though. Yeah. You get a CNA yeah. in one area and then Not RNs and all the others. Because right. we already did that. Oh, yeah. Talking about the dollars. We yeah. do. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I, I mean, it, it sounds like if, if if there's a nurse at CES that they couldn't, I mean. If there was an emergency. A a right. We've got four school ed. nurses in this town, and we've got emergency services in the backyard. Where are the other nurse? CES is the closest. Kennard, nurse. Centerville. But it doesn't Reedham. have to be a nurse to give medication either. I know, I know. I'm just thinking. Because um, if you go, if you take, if your children go on a field trip, your doc, yes, your teacher is in charge of their I medication. I, I, I got you. So we're not, we're not letting children take their own no, medication. Exactly, exactly. But Which yet, is yeah. I'm and to I, I cannot justify $55,000 for a nurse. Either. I just I can't. can't either. Um, it would be nice in a real world, but how do you how do you, how 
how do you justify that with parents? Say I had a diabetic child at APA. How do you justify that with liability with parents and the child? That you parent? don't have the nurse. <coughs> Justify yeah. that you yeah. don't. Are is you, that, you asking yeah, us? Is that we like, can't. I mean, that's <laughs> what we're yeah. we, we, other, we, yeah. other than the medication piece, what, what other things are happening that we feel like a nurse should be there? Well, Jen if said a student, a diabetic well, the thing shock is, or If a student gets it. ill and administering, just like in a, yeah. any normal school setting. Uh, remind me, how many injured. students are there? It varies. Um, Does it, the, time, I don't know it, how the, the highest it can be is uh, we've had... The highest is 60? Uh, we, well, we've had close to 30, 35 there okay. um, normally so in the spring. About now I believe we're about uh, 18. Right. I'm sorry? I'm listening, but I, I just heard what she yeah. said. We, you know, when we're looking at per people. almost $1,500 per child for a nurse. For a nurse. That's what I was kind of getting at. I mean, if you're thinking per pupil. So, but if you, if, you, if you don't have an RN. My point is, you know, that's why I suggested a CNA because the cost is significantly it. different have to be and it wouldn't need to be every day. Isn't there a union for them? Like, wouldn't that have to be negotiated with this current nurses union, like the nurses in the... She's just talking about... <coughs> but but I thought that There's in the past we had moved away from that plan into... <coughs> RNs for a reason, and then if we go back on that for one school, we're not being it's equitable. Not a well, one said. location, and, and don't we have we're not CNAs being equitable. Right. Well, that's why, that's why I can't support it at all. That's why I have a problem supporting it at all. I mean, it's hard I think for we me. Have like, I look four, at it from a parent's point of view, and I look at it through a fiscal point of view. Fiscally, it doesn't work. But as from a parent, I would, God, I would, I would just hate for a sick child. That to life to be on us because we said that we don't need a nurse out there. That that's my struggle. I think that's maybe the compromise is to bring the amount down. I mean, I can see where we can justify a smaller than a regular nurse. I mean, will we be legally on the hook this if is, something happens well, and we don't have medical staff there right then and there? Not really a school. Otherwise, we would have to have one in this building. Right. That's I mean, correct. And. Did we already have a discussion about the Centerville middle, the Centerville Elementary School nurse just kind of coming over? Like, why don't, right that's like right street. across the street. Right. Like, why would we be able to, like, help with the salary there if she's then working a dual role? You know, then we're looking at five, ten, I don't know, whatever you want to throw out to then be overseeing both sites. As I can't justify $55,000 for a nurse sit sitting out there and right. no one's sick and like, no one has either, a medical need. Less than a quarter of a mile away from, from another nurse that we're paying for. And do and dual right. positions. Right. Right. Um, we we um, clearly do not recognize this as a school. Can we do However, it as an intern? we do recognize it as a need. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, and I'm also thinking in, in an emergency situation, um, we call emergency services anyway. Exactly. Um, but, yeah. That doesn't mean we should get rid of our school nurses by any means. Right, right. They're, what can we they're come for down a reason. We, yeah, the, uh, what it, would that cost just a practitioner? I'm, I'm not but really I don't sure. Think, I don't I think we can do that based on what Jen said, we, negotiating. We have Here's determined. We have to go through that through the negotiation we're, system with the union because we're employing our ends now. Yeah, I think there's a that position think, for a reason. I, I could be wrong, but I think we that went we to that Farley several to, years ago. If we don't, yes. cre if we don't answer that question, the position as an RN, we create it as LPN or something, and have a salary for that. I don't think we're in trouble. I don't know. That's something uh, that Mr. Farley would probably have to answer for us because I don't know how that. Yeah, we're, we're looking it up right now. That would be like us employing a certain type of teacher out there. With no certification yeah. that other teachers had say, to have. Well, it's a program. We don't need certified teachers out there. And then you're going to have the union. There's right. going to be, there'll be big problems. Which locations, um, Ms. Landgraf, have LPNs currently? I'm sure, but there are four of them. Right? There are four of them. Um, oh, so we do so we have all, that's not what I'm 100%. Saying. We already have. <laughs> okay, right. see, maybe I thought like we, we maybe they, they had tried to move it towards all our ends. Maybe it's like they, a they they hours a day. day. Then that's justifiable. Yeah. So the point, so the point no, was, down. I hear the, the um, yes. concern about the 55. So if, if, if it's the number that is the issue, then let's cut down on the number because the need is there. So if we employed someone for part-time 
um, who is not an RN, but perhaps a, a LPN, or I don't know if we can do a CNA, but that doesn't have the same 55K figure, but still fills the need. I, I, I would, I'm definitely willing to look at that. Yeah. As long as it's, like I said, we're in the parameters of what we're supposed to be. And we can look at it from the perspective of a part-time position? Yes. As opposed to a full time, I think that's more feasible well, wait a minute, for this but wait location. A minute. So how do, how do you know when the you my don't question know would when be the when is the part is time? Hit. If somebody's going to get sick, they're going to get sick but, when the nurse leaves. Yeah, that's exactly right. Or the nurse that's isn't exactly there. Right. Mm -hmm. So, the so, so what's the point? You haven't achieved anything. You're exactly you achieved right. nothing. Yeah, You're I exactly right. Point oh is still right. Still have it. I just find it hard to to have someone. At the, at the maximum, the majority of the time, except for the end of the school year, the maximum amount of kids out there is 30 kids, correct? Because I've never seen the numbers. Or okay. Could be the highest. <laughs> so I just can't justify $55,000 for someone to sit out there all day, five oh, days a week. I agree. Which was the point of saying part-time. But if you're saying you, you can't justify it's either all RN or nothing at all. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Well, I think it's full time or nothing at all. Right, I'm exactly. I'm sure they're saying RN. I think they're just saying full time because if you're doing part time, you're gambling you're with when the, the child's going to get the sick or right. 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 injured. Full time, something lower than an RN. Yeah. But why and are we not continuing to explore the Centerville Elementary nurse right. playing a dual role option? That seems like a no-brainer in some ways. What, to what see is, what her like schedule what, is. It, it, right. right, which she is a supposition right. that should then be, you know, covering both. And right. Can she cover here if there on. were to be an emergency? Right, and what would need to and be apparently changed? That's happening is there now. something about how we change a little bit of the, the salary how many and make that an attractive option because it, is, I, I it would be more work for them. question is, how can we even say center, right now what's our plan? Someone gets sick in that building, what do we do? What's our process? Someone gets sick in that building and we need a nurse. What Someone do we over do? here is going to have to answer that, not me. I, I'm just asking, if, if it, what if is it, our process? If it is possible, the student can go over to um, Centerville Elementary or the nurse possibly could come over there, depends on what's happening you know, at the time. Mm -hmm. If it is meds, I do believe that the program manager um, dispenses meds, okay. um, but that's it. Okay. Uh, in case of an injury that would require ambulance like any any call call or something no. like call that. Like you would any school. Right. I exactly, exactly. So what we're currently doing is the Centerville Elementary nurse situation, is that right? As it's possible there, I think about 550 students over at Centerville Elementary, younger ones with... How many emergencies have we had at APA? Uh, well, and I guess that I'm asking... That required... And, and how often has she I been required to leave her location right. at Centerville Elementary and come here? And come if here. we can go there, you know, the parent, the student has a migraine or something like that. I have a little, I have a bug flu in my ear. Take the student over there. I get all that. Is there a, is there a trend where she needs to leave her position over there and come here? Because now we are really talking dual roles. Now we are talking about overloading one particular nurse out Absolutely. of all 14. I don't think that's feasible Absolutely. either. I, I'm, I'm good leaving it just as it is right now. Where yeah, are they, online. Rob? Where are those four? Is it a Bayside, Ken Island? Um, no, they're, they're different places. There's one at Southers Hill Middle School. Bayside has one. Um, Queen Anne's County High School has one. Um, the LPNs? LPNs. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember where the fourth one is. I was, I was kind of figuring that maybe one is like at Bayside and the RN is at KIS, but, but no, that, none of that makes sense there, except for the Bayside maybe. But Queen is County by themselves, they've got an LPN. Second one. How right, but you got Center because Hill right next door that has an RN. Has an RN. Okay. We, right. so and then you have an RN from the health department, um, Mrs. Okay. Kaufman, okay. that oversees too. everything that goes on with Maybe all the nurses in the county. Maybe we need to just look at a county. couple different options. Take Carrie's option of looking at the nurse from CBS. Take the other option as a full-time 
And I'd like to see how many emergencies or we've had. The lesser of the yeah. RN is, is. And how many emergencies we've had here and, at and then I, So a. Because we could sit and talk about this oh, for hours. Oh, right, right, right. So. Yeah. Uh, and it is 155, ladies and gentlemen, so I just wanted to let everyone know that you have an appointment, right? Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so um, do we want to stop here or do we, what do we want to do? Well, our I'm not comfortable with not having the input of another board member okay. who is new <laughs> and say, needs I'm, to know. I'm in learning mode. Right. right. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to know that this is today. discussion and, and everyone has to have the fair chance to participate. What is our deadline? We have a deadline here, right? February 7th. Right? <laughs> well, now that we understand, at least we got through all. Well, I don't know size. how we can have it. We a can kind of. No, I'm not arguing. I'm just saying yeah. we need to get a picture. Let me there. suggest this. In the past, what we've done is like not we've the had the slideshow. We have this in front of so. us. We can do our due diligence at, at yeah. off time. And then right. any questions we could submit as, as a board. We can't talk. E email each other about the right, question. Right. We can submit it so that we have those answers for our next meeting and kind of we can move forward from there. Our next meeting is, is supposed to be the superintendent's <laughs> um, recommended budget. Uh, well, so she happen. needs yeah, she needs happen. some <laughs> idea. We need but some that, idea. But that's not going to happen because we don't have we don't have no, negotiations. We, <laughs> well, we usually we don't. We don't. We just put no. in what we think. We, we didn't but last we year need either. to, we didn't you know, which is it? Either. It's estimated yeah. in here. Mm -hmm. Right. Even I, when I we understand presented that, to the commissioners, we didn't right. have negotiations completed. Well, I just a, a monster in it, the closet. It won't, it's not going to be ready. That's the white elephant seven. in the room, right? <laughs> or the pink elephant. Yeah. It's not. I mean, I, I'm with Jen. We all sit and we all go through it, submit questions to you. Um, you pass them on. You get them. We take it from there, and then, um, but. Um, would you, would you like to change the date of the um, board presentation? We have to, though, right? It to have? Give, it's next that, week. That's for the 7th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it has, has to, to give you our time. Right, March. Not till March. Right, March. But <coughs> our changes um, need to be Our March reflected. board meeting is the 7th also. 7th of March. Yeah. So yeah. generally, gotcha. right it's after that weeks. board meeting is when, when you goes. approve a budget that we submit to the county commission. Well, that gives us that gives us enough time to be ready to approve it. But to me, it does. No, the seventh is next week. No, Wednesday. no, 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 no. I'm no, talking about by March seventh. Oh, oh, when oh, she oh. present, if she were to present it at the March seventh meeting, oh, 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 we oh, should oh, be wait, prepared to accept it. Accept it or deny it or deny it one or the other. But by then we will have weeded through it. Exactly. Um, when is our is our meeting March seventh? We need to get the word out right now that that cha that change is going to take effect yeah. on our calendar. <clears throat> it's not going to be a budget presentation on no, the seventh of February. It. it will be on the well, March yeah, meeting. Go out. Well, that's yeah, that's not that needs to yeah. be done right well, now. We're having a budget meeting. <clears throat> February 21st. We got two of them, I the think. 14th and 21st. 14th yeah. and the 21st. That's Ash Wednesday. So that's going to be. So what we need is, to, I mean, there's no reason why we can't vote to approve a budget one before a session. Right. That's we right. We have to have a full session. It's all public, right? Right. I mean, exactly. So we could maybe make some clarifications. Is it next Wednesday we have another meeting? I think we just need to announce Well, next it. Wednesday is our, our um, board meeting, our monthly board meeting. Right. Wait, wait. But I think we just need to announce it that that's when, whenever, if it's going to be 14th or 21st right. or whatever, we just need to um, that that's going to be the presentation right. and the vote for it. So, okay. well, I guess it we need to do time. that at the actual the March meeting. Well, Correct. We, or, no, the March meeting is presented right now to the public as a budget presentation meeting. No, that's February. I mean, um, in the February meeting. That's no, what, no, I mean. what I'm March. saying is change it to the March 7th. Although that's when she goes to the commissioners. Afterwards. Same. That's when it's submitted to. But the we could, we can decide on it during one of those work the sessions days is in point. February. Right. And so just, we'll just need to make the announcement of when it's going to be presented and, and you'll vote on it at right, that point. It gives yeah. you more time. Right. So we're saying it now. We'll post to the website and when we have our meeting on. February 7th next week right then we'll say it again exactly Does that, that we're going to shoot for March 7th mm -hmm. for the yes for the presentation and for the, the presentation board. yes okay so we just said two different things yeah. we did <laughs> we need to get that language <laughs> okay, out of the yeah. notification so right now you're saying <clears throat> not to vote or present on it 
for the school board until March 7th. Oh, no, no, I no, thought no, you no, were no, saying no, no, no. earlier, no, no. I'm sorry. later I'm in sorry. February. Okay. That so you we present are on March 7th. Okay. Probably the 21st then. Right. I, that's what I'm thinking. If we have two more. February. Okay. Usually what happens is usually the superintendent presents their budget to the board. Right. Says, this is what I recommend that you submit to the county commissioner. Oh, okay. And, and then there's a 30 that. day right. period for you all to review it and right. make okay. whatever recommendations say, no, we don't support okay. whatever the superintendent. Okay. And then we make adjustments to that. Okay. And then that is what actually gets approved and submitted to the county commissioner. That so what I'm sense. hearing is we're not going to have a superintendent's recommended <coughs> budget. Not on February 7th. But you because could is what she's saying. You, you yeah. could. You could do this. You, know, done you could do this. I, yeah, I, I, I think it's, well, I, I think that's the point of the work session so that right. you can get, get your questions answered. To. We pare it down to a place where you're comfortable voting right. on what we've discussed. Exactly. I thought that's the way we did it last no, year. No, we didn't. Well, maybe last year that's we did. That's generally the way Yeah. Happens. Well, yeah. The, before we did it, because then that way was the way the superintendent could show, this is my dream right here. You know, this is what we really need. And then we have to cut it down. Oh, I yeah, mean, that's how we used to have to do it until last budget. year. Yes. yes. Well, we so still did that. Could we we still presented to the commissioners a dream budget that we had already pared yeah. down, and yeah. we pared it down again. Can we rec – I recommend that we – do you have enough time if we get our, our questions answered around the 14th and then the 21st do the presentation, we vote, and that way you're ready to go March 7th? I mean, is there any and and then it cuts and then it cuts out that 30-day period because oh. you will have had ample time to ask your questions even before the final presentation for the public and for you to make your vote on. But I mean that, that just cuts down on some yeah. time. It gives you more time to to you know have these conversations and then we present it to you. At that point, you will have agreed on what I don't want to present to you. Something that we're going to pair down, right? Again. That we, right. If, if we've discussed exactly. half of it and we understand your will, exactly. then let's finish the conversation. That's let's exactly be on right. the right. same page, page. as there a group we before we That's take right. it to the public, which is where it goes to the commissioners and right. still comes back to us, and we still have to pair it down. Right. Which is not to right. say that you might not still have some questions or sure. want to say right. some right. things, right. you know. For yeah, that's for, sure. yeah. I thought that that's what what the plan was here. So twenty first, okay, give us enough time. Uh, the 21st I'm back yes so we yes. won't have a budget meeting again until the 21st of February no until no, the 14th. No, 14th oh gotcha 14th with a goal of settling it settling on the 21st ours. so she can present it on the following the Wednesday right or the first Wednesday is everybody of March. okay with that yes well, yes. Yeah, yes. Does everybody actually, make sense? Yes. It does. Thank you. And I have to say, go. Thank you guys. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because that's still three weeks before she presents to the commissioner. Yeah. Two weeks. Yes. Two weeks. And Two weeks. And when she presents Twenty third of March. Okay. Well, we have a work session on the fourteenth. Yes. Correct. But she'll actually be presenting her budget to the public on the first. No, on March on March seventh. Oh, I thought we said the. 20th. I thought we said the twenty first. You. Yeah, me too. Now. So we're, I think here, we're all here confused here. We need to present to the public in our <clears throat> regular monthly meeting. We can do it in this meeting. Well, we can do that. Uh, we can do that on February 21st. Yeah. That's not our regular monthly meeting. But then she presents on the 7th of March. I thought we had already decided that. No, that's well, not apparently what I, that's somebody's not, not understanding because yeah. I think you and I must be on the same page. <clears throat> Maybe. Because on the 21st, we. We make our decision on the 21st with between uh, now all and of the our 14th. final changes. Yeah, all of our final she changes gets will be with done. Robin and right. gets them all on paper, right. and right. that's her presentation for March 20, March, March 7th, 7th, which but is we can approve it on this on the We've already 21st. seen the presentation as it is now. Now we've worked to get it to her to present to the public. Right. Yes. Yes. So on the 21st of February, is when we, we can say settle this, on is, what she's taking out this is the, the budget public. that we would like for you to take to the public. And the commission. Does that make sense yes. now? Yes. That's is that I, what you that's understand? That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. What I so we were all on the same okay. page then. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. Yes. So, yes. Yes. So, so yes. on the 21st of February, 
we will have by then we will have agreed upon yes. you know, what, how we are paring down this correct or that might be us. our final and, and this then is I will at that same meeting <coughs> present the budget on the 21st of February and we continue with the presentation to uh, submitting that budget request to the county on March 7th as scheduled well if we're still making changes and suggestions and agreeing to it on the 21st you still think you can present it right then and there because with those I won't be changing anything after you've agreed upon it but I think we're using we the shouldn't 21st be making as a any changes after the 14th we should come in here on February 14th and because all of our we have two weeks all of our answers will be all of our questions will be answered. Okay, try that one more time. And um, on the when we I'm come into our work about session, that, I thought the 14th and the 21st we're going to be yes. work sessions. But but I think well we can do half the work session yeah, exactly. on the and 21st. Right. But she if we, we can't ask her to present to us on the. She doesn't need. You don't need to present back to us, even with the changes. We would have think, approved the changes she's then. She's presenting to us per se as yeah. the public. Right. That's on March 7th though. Right. Right. There doesn't have to be a presentation to us in the meantime, another one. We might still be making changes right up until 2 o'clock on the 21st that you get on paper for your presentation on March 7th. I thought the 21st was a working so session as well. So what you're saying March 7th is just a presentation to the public is this is what the board has agreed what on. the yeah. board has agreed yeah. upon yeah. that's our final no budget changes. that we would no change until right. they cut until they and then we come back have right. to do right that. right right but I thought we had two work that. sessions so to get to that anything. point it's just a formality of getting out to the public I, I don't know okay. I don't know how much work we have left to do um, We're only on page 11. I know that's why I'm yeah. concerned that <laughs> more work session isn't enough I'm thinking and, the pages, and the first 10 and the first 10 pages and the first 10 pages were all advertisements don't count <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to concentrate on the, the presentations I think more than this I think well our changes this. are the presentation that's the thing no, but I'm saying no concentrate on this because this is what we need to decide on these items that she's presenting or so well and, and those items are what's in this book. correct right right so if, right, right I mean I'm yeah. just going to yeah. focus on your slides okay. to come up with my yeah. right right, I mean, right. Needs okay. so on the 14th I'm going to have to Skype in because I'm going to be um, at the AASA conference okay um technology straight having fun with that noise <laughs> All right, so are we are we done then? We yeah. are we I need to oh, that we need that PIO position if you think so. That's great. Last year we did it. Maybe we're in 20 seconds. She's going to present all the things as it's sent on the 7th. You're going to actually adopt the budget. Correct? Correct. I think that's correct. I think we're finally there. Yeah. Correct. I'm just worried it's not enough time. Just leave it to Jackie. Well, how I don't know how I need to look and see how much more we have to do. Yeah, but you got two weeks. You know, we need to, to we need to at home, you know, sit yeah, down know and, and, and get I'm that, you that. know, because I mean, some of this stuff is is just the same things over and over. So, I mean, um, I all right, so let's see. Yeah, let's I just shoot for that. I thing. make a motion we close the work session. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it. Thank you, and we'll see you next Wednesday evening. <laughs> All right.